Episode 55, Community Thespian. Introducing Daniel Ricketts on the BTS Creative Academy podcast. Hi. Thank I'm you for cut. joining me this on is cool. the podcast. Yeah. I appreciate you being here this evening. <laughs> oh, it's great. I like being here. It's, I spend too much time here, I think, actually. So, you do, yeah, don't you? In, <laughs> in, our, in our theatre yeah. on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just before we jump in, I have a bit of a tradition that's yes. that built up with the podcast. You're a listener, yes, so uh, yes. so you should know. You're so ready now. <laughs> like every, like yeah. that's really quite cool that people know the the clap. Absolutely. So yeah. So what do we go? We go. We clap on free. I thought it was one, two, three, clap. One, two, three, clap. Even yeah. better. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh no! So that was rubbish. That was a bit. Come, on, we can do better. Than that one, two, three. There we go. Sweet. We're in the yeah, zone. Awesome. And uh, yeah, it just helps with the. With the with, it, with the syncing yeah, yeah. of the editing. Um, so, Dan. Hi. Hello. Um, we're definitely getting a flicker of it's the lights like, here, one, aren't we? It's one of the ones it's up one there, of the, the house ones lights back there. Within the theatre, huh? Yeah. Or maybe it's well, the... It's the Victoria Hall ghost. Yes. That we always hear about. Yeah, there are, there are, I think there are a couple. It's an old building, yeah. so... Um, I've actually got someone joining me on the podcast in a couple of episodes' right. time that's uh, what, a ghost, ghost hunter. Wicked. <laughs> that's what they, <laughs> they enjoy go for doing. a wander around the theatre and see so, if can find Yeah, it. He wants, we're going to talk about some ghost stories. But uh, Have you got any ghost stories while we're at it? No, I'm, ter- I'm terrible at stories and jokes. I always come <laughs> up with really bad jokes at work um, or anywhere. Um, and then someone tell us a joke and I'm, <laughs> I can't remember any of them. So the point put- I got a pack of dad jokes as a stocking present, like on cards. Mm-hmm. And they're in, my work, they're in my bag at work and I can't just pull one out and everyone goes, oh. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm terrible with stories and jokes. No, it's, it's quite hard to. It's funny as a as an actor, people kind of expect you to be good at that kind of stuff. Yeah. To have a storage place, yeah. maybe, or just know um, everything, or just know stuff like that. But no. no, I'm I'm very similar. I can't just pull a joke. No, even if I heard it yesterday. No, uh, no, no, I'm the same. I'm like, I'm like I'm in that situation where I'll hear a um, like we'll be in a situation and I'll think, oh, there's a film line that goes perfectly with this. Mm. Um, and that's that's me. I can like little random connections, but I can't go. Oh, I've, I can tell you a story about the time when I can't yes, do any of yeah. that. Yeah, no, that, that, that's actually very similar. Someone the other day said to me, "What's in the box?" And I instantly just went to seven. What's that? It's a movie quote from Seven. What's in the box? Oh, I haven't seen that film in a very long time. Oh, so it's like the, it's like at the end of the film, right. the the bad guy Kevin Spacey yeah. brings a box, and he's kind of teasing Brad Pitt yeah. that there's something really important in the box, and he's like teasing him, and he's like, "What's in the what? box?" <laughs> so when everyone says, whenever there's any box in the room, <laughs> <laughs> or someone says, "What's in the box?" It just my mind goes back to that moment in that film. Yeah, What's me, in me, the box? Me and my daughter were playing. It's really sad. We, I, I love computer games, one of mm-hmm. my many hobbies, and we were playing a Star Wars game last night, uh, me and my daughter, and there's a bit where we fight this guy, and um, we were like, right, we'll just push him off the off the wall, rather than, because he was a really tough, like, boss bloke, mm-hmm. um, and he fell off, and then he landed on a ledge, and he didn't die, and, we, and my daughter then went, don't you people ever die, which is like f- the little frog man from X-Men, yes, and yeah. I had exactly the same reference, but she beat me to it, and I was like, oh, you beat me, and we just, we, yeah, we're like our little little nerd family together, Yeah. so yeah, sorry Rachel for that, <laughs> <laughs> she, won't, she won't, help, won't thank me for saying that. That's okay, yeah, and, and that's, um, yeah, it's just, there's a storage in there, isn't there, for yeah. quotes and movie reference. But yeah, to pull out a full joke is is quite hard, or a full story. Yeah, no, it's yeah, not, I'm not, not like every, not everyone has that capacity. These people they? who've lived great, exciting lives and can remember interesting things they've mm. done. I'm not, I'm not at that point yet. I wonder if some people have, uh, like, if they rehearse it. <laughs> I don't know. They must do. Or like, is it just a natural gift to maybe, be able to do? Like that? Maybe if they've got. I don't know. Those people going on those shows must think, oh, they might ask me about this, so I'll mm. think about that. I don't know. Are you mean when people are on like a quiz show or a talent well, actually, show? Or like one of those, like, um, what are they called? Like, uh, like, like a Graham Norton type thing or something. Yes. They must think, oh, they're going to talk to me about this, so I'll have... Like, have something pre-prepared. Or whether, or whether they've been warned, oh, Graham's thought about this, so have that up your sleeve. So they yeah. must have, you know, that. I've never been on a show like that or even been to see one, so no. maybe they must have something organised. Yeah, I, I would guess they would. They, they must say, have like a pre... Yeah, Pre moment of what's yeah. your story? Think about your story. And, yeah, but not on this. Not on not this on show. This not well, on I've this. Been podcast. Thinking about it because I wonder. I wonder what Mike's going to ask. Not me about. on this podcast because well, it goes all over the place, which is really cool. Mm. Well, I like the. I like the. This is a conversation yeah. around creativity. Yeah, around your creative life. Your, I, I know you as an actor. Yeah, uh, someone that's involved a lot in community theatre, um, and I guess part of the 
thing with this podcast is getting to the bottom of a little bit what your journey is and why you why you do the things you do. Yeah. Um, so what's what's been going on recently with you then? Where did I, you just did a Christmas community did a Christmas show? Didn't yeah, you? Did, did Railway Children here in Victoria Hall Theatre, and mm-hmm. the stage is still uh, yet to be painted back to black from our little railway track and kind of made, sort of mottled stage that we had. Um, yeah, great show at Christmas. Um, I forget that it's a Christmas show, but that you know the story set at Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, I was playing father. Um, originally, I said to Simon, our director, I said I can't. I can't do as much of this one this year. I've got I've got too many hobbies. So I was trying to say, I need to make a bit more time for some of the other ones. Um, so I'll have a small part. Went, okay, that's fine, that's fine. You can play some of the other ones, some of the other hobbies. Yeah, the other hobbies, yeah. Right. So I, 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 I'll talk with them another time, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I said, I can, I can only rehearse on like weekdays rather than the weekends um, until we get close to the show. So I'll do a small part. Okay, you do father. He's just beginning and end, and then you can just help out backstage or whatever else in between because you won't want to leave. You'll be around. Like, okay, that's fine. Um, and then it got nearer the time, and then unfortunately one of the other chaps in the cast couldn't um, play these two smaller little other roles. Well, they, mm-hmm. Actually, they were bigger parts than father. Um, so then I'd pick those up as well. So then suddenly it was went from well five minutes at the beginning and the end to mm-hmm. five minutes at the beginning, and then you change your costume, and then you're this grumpy old man who drives the car and says, I dare say, and that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a Russian uh, who stumbles onto the platform, uh, and then uh, back to being father again. So, uh, just so you really got stuck in. Oh yeah, and so I went from being I'm not going to be very involved to oh, actually I'm in this one quite a lot <laughs> and building the set and uh, a bit of painting here and there and mm-hmm. making some stuff. So um, yeah, I want, one director once said to me they gave me to give a little cast of like, awards and it was the you just can't help yourself award and I just end up getting involved and just going yeah let's just do a bit of this oh, I can do that I can do that. Why do you think that is? I d- I'm a doer. Mm. I think I just like to do. I get I just do stuff. I've never been great at leading or being in charge. Okay. Um, that's a, I think that's a confidence thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but if someone says, here's a list of jobs, I think you can do them, go do them. Like, All right, let's do it. Or I'll see something and go, I think I can do that. I can help you with this. Can I do it? To the point where they were like, no, stop. You need to go and focus on, like, just save some energy for being in the show, not just like not fixing doing. everything. But that is yeah. one of the, the things that I enjoy. I enjoy about community theatre yeah. is that getting involved with many different aspects. You you don't just turn up and no. do the stage bit. There's so much more to yeah, it, yeah. isn't there? And that, I mean, that's uh, that's what community theatre I think lives and breathes on. You've got every, every, some people are really really great actors, uh, and that's what they really want to focus on. But I'm very new to this. Um, I've only really started doing shows here four years ago. Um, okay. And that includes the, like, the kind of two year chunk where we didn't do any because of COVID. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I've, I thought, well, I want to just try everything because outside of here, I've done stuff in school. I'm a teacher. Yeah. So I've been backstage helping with stuff there. Sort of, you've done a bit of music stuff with kids, a um, bit of direct, a limited amount of directing. I'm kind of like, I'll help out on the sides of it a little bit, like an assistant. Um, and then. Yeah, sort of right. Well, I'll just I'll just pitch in with bits that I think I can try and help out with, mm-hmm. basically. And you're always it always seems to me from what I see, you're always quite yeah. Your family get very involved, yeah. don't they? Your wife gets involved yeah. and your daughter gets involved. Yeah, yeah. This is my wife. It's my wife's fault that I'm I'm involved in theatre. <laughs> I think it's her. Yeah, it's, I'll call it fault for now. Um, yeah, and it's great. It's something we can all do together. Um, and we found we we all love doing it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really nice when you've got something your family can share that you all enjoy doing and getting involved with and meeting, you know, making friends. That's, that's brilliant because it means that you're not leaving somebody out. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a great release for us and we've done separate stuff, but um, doing it all together is, that's fab. Particularly something around doing the Christmas show as well, where you can all be together at Christmas time. Yeah. And, and all do your hobby. Yeah. And be with friends as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I think if, if one of us had been off Mm -hmm. doing it, then, it would be great. You get to go and see them, but then also you don't see a lot of them for that period over Christmas and running up to it because it's quite frantic. Um, and then even in like the last show when we did um, Lime Weeks in the Wardrobe here, I was in it, Rachel was in it, and then Jess got more involved in it and ended mm-hmm. up like kind of being like just coming to help with some rehearsals and do a bit of chaperoning. And then there was some painting and then some and costumes and everything else. And that's just, and that's mm-hmm. kind of just. And really, she even ended up being on the stage. She ended up being in it as well. Yeah, yeah of course. And that, that we, had great a, we had sickness, when, didn't we? We had some illness. Yeah, illness. Well, I wasn't in it. So you were doing the voice of Aslan mm-hmm. from up in the box upstairs. Yes, you had COVID. Didn't I got you, COVID, so you, which was helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the guy playing Mr. Beaver lost his voice. So Jess became Mr. Beaver as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you sneakily videoed it, which was 
she was, I think, what's the word? Shocked? <laughs> pleased? Pleased but annoyed at the same time that uh, you'd, you'd videoed it. Yeah. Well, I videoed it for her. I yeah. don't think it was for it was for nice to, It was nice to have that recorded. Mm-hmm. Almost, yeah. Because I recorded it. Everyone else got a recorded yeah, yeah. performance, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. But yeah, she really, really did throw herself into it. As a family, I think yeah, you all like the do. the night before, wasn't it? You were like, mm. right, okay, Jess, uh, you're going to be Mr. Beaver. You oh. all do, you kind of have a family. I even see it in your in your daughter as well, yeah. Rachel. You do sort of have a family ethos. Just I don't know if you've done in. it on purpose, but you all get so stuck in think, and get involved, don't you? Yeah, we don't want to, you like, is it worth doing anything half-heartedly, mm-hmm. almost? Yeah, you just get on with it. Just, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. You probably learn something from it. Um, but yeah, just dive in, just go for it. And yeah, you have you, you surprise yourself. You have a lot of fun that yeah. way. Yeah. And do you you say you've got many other hobbies? Do you have kind of same ethos with your other hobby hobbies? I know you're also you're the the cycle referee. Oh, yeah, 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 that's the trouble. I was like, what you got? You go on you're sitting on social media. What do you call mm-hmm. yourself? And it's like, well, I like singing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the kind of singing theatre, all that stuff together. I like cycling, yes. and I like and I referee rugby. Um, okay. I can't play it. I'm hopeless because I'm not built for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but physically or mentally, because you've got to be slightly nuts to want to be quite tough. run into someone or get yeah, run and in. get broken. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a guy, one of the guys, and he broke his ankle at the weekend. Um, mm-hmm. So, and that's like his third injury in a year. So he's probably done for maybe forever now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then cycling. It's just I like being outside as well. It's just it's a great place. That's my real kind of release. I'll just go outside and. I can go. I can work all day out in the garden or in my shed or whatever else. Just you know, just doing mm-hmm. things, um, fixing things or playing around with my bike. Much to my wife's annoyance, and I disappear down there. You playing with your bike? You bike? You playing with your bike again? Yes. Yeah, just <laughs> fixing stuff. Um, or like going on little trips with um, with a friend. Like we take put some stuff on the bike, go and camp somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I tried to do a big race. Uh, well, last year now, isn't it? Yeah, because it's twenty twenty four, which was like a five hundred kilometre three day thing we had to ride this massive big route around the south of England I didn't mm-hmm. finish because um, I didn't eat enough food ironically which has never been a problem for me so so how did had you ever done anything like that no, before no I thought of like no. I like I got it, one of those, it was a lockdown thing yeah started started cycling a lot more in, in lockdown mm-hmm. um, and then you go down the little rabbit hole of YouTube and like, oh this is oh, people ride like really long way well, that's that looks fun mm-hmm. I'd love to and do give that. yourself a goal something yeah, to, move goals to move towards yeah um, and then that becomes like, well, now I need to get this. And it, it does, it's the risk is it becomes quite consumerist. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like some hobbies where you can spend a lot of money on stuff that you might use once in a few months or years even. Um, so you get stuff, I've got to make sure I use it. So yes, it's an excuse yeah. to go out and go out on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you did, so you, you, you prepped, so you trained for this, yeah, this big ride? Yeah, I was in, be- so in between, I'd so, so yeah, I've done, this is the thing, I've got too many hobbies and trying to balance them always mm. a bit of a, I don't know. Yeah, I just overdo it. Um, so in between rehearsing for a show, I was out on my bike um, and just trying to do big rides, sort of sometimes fifty. So would 60 it have miles. been better to have been at that time been focusing on just the, yeah. the ride? It would have been easier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just to do that. I think that's that's the trouble with me. I've got too many things that I like doing. Too many balls in the yeah, air. Like I've you said, you said about like once. juggling. Yeah. Too many. Yeah. Um, so that's like so. So ironically, when it comes to doing railway children, I said right, I want to focus on rugby. So mm-hmm. I couldn't do weekends because I was refereeing Saturday, Sunday. Not all, not both, but usually on a Sunday doing some some games locally. Um, but then I thought yeah, that that doesn't happen any other time of the week. So that's why I did it then. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's a case of you kind of got to pick what you're doing and when. Which is so it's really hard with theatre because obviously it's it's like you get a chunk of time, like say like, yes, so it's three yeah. months normally for one of mm-hmm. our shows that you've got to, you've got to dedicate to that to be able to do a really good job of it because mm-hmm. again why would you want to be involved in a show and do a half-hearted job because yeah. people are coming to sit in this lovely theatre and watch a a show that they think is going to be good mm-hmm. um, and like in the Harlow Theatre Company adage is we don't do amateur theatre you know we, we want it to look professional you want to give it your best yeah of course mm-hmm. um, so yeah you want to make sure that you've you've put all your time into it so really I guess it should be because well I'm doing this and it, then it, I can it's off not the treated like a pastime, like no. uh, oh, this is what I'm just doing to to fill up my evening. No, no, no. No, this is a an art and a craft yeah. that you care about. And, and the people, I mean, I'm I'm just I'm just Dan, who four years ago got invited or kind of convinced by my wife to come along and audition for a play. Mm-hmm. I was like, a play? Oh, that's, that's fine. You were she was going to go do the play, and I was like, that's fine. You go do that, and I'll get you know some evenings to relax and time mm-hmm. to myself, whatever else. Um, 
and then because it was stepping out, which is about tap dancing. Okay. Um, it was on in the West End a few years ago um, with Amanda um, Holden. That's her name. Was in it from off. She's on the radio. Um, and uh, it's all about tap dancing. My wife grew up locally, um, dancing all the time. That was her thing. She danced at the Playhouse. She was in all the pantos um, and then stopped, kind of stopped doing performance at the age of about 18, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she went to the audition and said, oh, it was really great. Yeah, it was great. It was great. It was great. But it's a show with one man in it and nine women. I think that's how it is, or eight women. Um, but no men have turned up to audition. And we know we, we need someone. Come, why don't you come along? And I kind of raised my eyebrows, like, really? I, I can't. You've seen me dance. Like, you told me to do a band at our wedding so mm-hmm. that I didn't have to dance because that meant it was less embarrassing for her. Um, but she went, no, oh, fine, we come along, come along. So I went along and sort of shuffled my feet around a little bit to some tap dance music. Um, I was the only guy. So they went, oh, God, we'll give you a crack. Um, and they did a bit, you know, did some did some acting stuff within it as well. Um it went fine, and I'd, but I haven't hadn't been in a play a proper. That's a proper play. I'd done panto, mm. and I did a bit of Gilbert and Sullivan at university, which is like light, which is almost like a pantomime. Um, but then, yeah, twelve, what three three months later, I'd learnt to, I'd learnt some tap dance routines. I can't tap dance. But you'd learn a few. I'd routine. learned some routines, and I've so, still got the pair of tap shoes. So, at what of the age was this that you came into this so I community theatre? I was a late bloomer. I was mm. what 35, 36? Well, I've known older five. people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, yeah. I mean, but 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 some would consider that, that a late, late a, a late point yeah. to start a new and, a new hobby. And maybe like not having had really any involvement really in drama. Well, I stopped mm. drama in year eight at school because. Um, our drama teacher at school was a bit scary, mm-hmm. which was very good. And we put on, like, I used to put on grazing plays at school that I used to go and watch, um, but she was quite scary. Um, and also, I remember um, I went to uh, Davenant, which is in um, Loughton, and it had a really big performing arts department, loads of music, loads of drama. Mm-hmm. And we used to do a, like a, it was a performing arts week thing where in year eight, we had to devise a play as a form group and perform this play and a theme. And for some reason, I was like, oh, I think I'll, I'll have it. Nobody else wanted to do it. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll start writing something, mm-hmm. write this play. Nobody else wanted to be in it. So then I ended up sort of being one of the two characters that's main characters in it. And was like, oh, you're just doing it. And I remember getting really bullied in the end by other boys in the form. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, drama, you're, you're gay. Because oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, they didn't want to be involved in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess maybe that put me off. So I was like, I'm not going to do, I don't want to do drama. Because you get bullied for it. And the teacher was scary. How does that feel looking back to that time? It's really, it's a bit annoying, I guess. Mm. Cause I, who knows? I mean, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't any good. Um, <laughs> I'm still not. Um, but, you know, it'd been, maybe that was a thing I could have pursued. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, that's, that's frustrating that that's, that's the, that was the attitude then. And I think there's still a bit of that now in the mainstream school. When I know that from having worked in mainstream schools and trying to get boys to take part in a drama, in a show or a play, mm-hmm. It's really hard. You've, you've got one. You, you, it's a bit like I remember we've watched Glee recently with Rachel, mm-hmm. and they get that one guy in, and then there's a few that follow, and then they get you know you get a bit of a growth. Um, but it's getting it's finding, even in like, I think in community theatre, finding men who yeah, want to be involved is a bit of a challenge. Mm-hmm. So um, what would you say if you could go back in time and talk to that that twelve year old that, kid. that yeah. kid? What would you say to him now? I oh, don't don't worry about them. They're just maybe they're just jealous. They just, they just not, they don't want to give it a go. They, they were good at football. That was the football lads. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't very good at football. Um, maybe I should have just persevered a little bit. Yeah, I said, don't, yeah, you'll enjoy this. You'll stick a stick at it. It is actually really fun. Maybe there's something in this for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not to say that I was ever going to be like setting the world on fire. Of course not. Um, but. You know, would have been another way to but, something else to but enjoy. Do we do we give too much weight to that setting the world on fire? Oh, massively. Do we add too much yeah, weight? Yeah, yeah. If you're going to do this performing, or you're going to do you've got this, to be great. you've got to be the best. You've got yeah. to be the that. You've got to be world famous. Yeah. To give it any value, you can't do it as a hobby. Oh, we def- yeah, definitely. Like, and you get that, like, oh, I'm the I'm the lead in the play. I'm going to be on West End. One day, maybe. Oh, yeah, sure, maybe, yeah. Um, and I've worked with some amazingly talented teenagers like who blew me away, considering that they were like 13, 14. Um, mm-hmm. And you were just like... like you, they were singing the songs um, in a show we did 
like better with more feeling than it sounded like they were doing it in the videos I watched of productions like when people like mm-hmm. sneakily yeah, yeah, record yeah. stuff yes yeah I was like wow they've kind of got they're just brilliant mm-hmm. and I think they could really go somewhere but actually they weren't interested in taking theatre on as a as a job they wanted mm-hmm. to do other they had other talents I was like but keep keep that under your keep that in your pocket because mm-hmm. you can go and do that at uni just as a hobby or you can do it outside of work as a hobby. Uh, I, I don't think, yeah, I think we don't give enough weight to the benefits it can give you in life. Yeah. I've the, met loads of lovely people yeah. yourself. Yes, through, yeah. Through theatre that I, would, yeah. I wouldn't have otherwise met. Yeah. And because we've got a shared interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, in the years that I've been doing theatre, the amount of different types of people that I'd have mm. never met in any other walk of life. Yeah. In any, if you go to, a, if you, if you go, whatever job you do, you're a teacher. Yeah. You're only going to meet other teachers or yeah. students, yeah, or parents, <laughs> and that's kind of like even that the parents are mm. detached, aren't they? Yeah. So it's really you're just through work, you're just meeting other teachers. Whereas when you come to theatre, you'll meet, like you say, people that want to do it professionally. Yeah. Um, you're going to meet technical people. You're going to meet people that yeah that are that work in retail. Yeah. That work in finance. You, you, just the the spectrum of different types of people is so broad. Mm. And then we all kind of come together and create this, this show. And you get periods of time where you've got you're sitting and you get a chance to socialise mm. and find out about people. Like you say about work, I've got colleagues that I know, I've been working with them for a couple of years. I know very little about them because that's people prefer to keep their private life separate yes, from, yeah. from their job. Um, and students don't want to know about what I do. No, um, I guess there's a. I guess also with work, there's a, a vulnerability point. Yeah. There's a people are very conscious about opening up mm. too much at work. In, Whereas um, in theatre, it's the opposite. If mm. you're not open to trying new things, mm-hmm. or not like a director suggests something, or to exploring and using how you can use an, a previous experience to kind of maybe unlock that, I'm learning more about how to unlock like emotional responses to mm-hmm. things, um, that makes the it makes it. it you're not going to get the most out of a show. That you're taking part in mm-hmm. what, what, what's the right word a production production yeah production yeah, um, sorry, production because if you don't open up to doing things that are maybe new to you you're, ne- you're not going to get the most out of that experience mm. um, yeah it's in the vulnerability that yeah. I think the relationships are born mm. aren't they yeah yeah definitely. And, they're, and they're strong relationships mm. aren't they yeah if, otherwise if you uh, you don't engage fully you mm-hmm. don't you only get out what you put in so if you don't put in like that openness that vulnerability yes, yeah. that max effort into what you're trying to achieve it won't it will maybe fall flat when you come to do it and you think oh and then you have regret mm-hmm. the worst thing you can do is come away from a from three or four months working on putting a production together and go oh i wish i'd I wish i'd done that i wish i'd tried that yes yeah so like, i mean so the show the first show i think you saw me in was nell Gwynn. yes it was um, yes <laughs> and, and and that's really that's <laughs> that really really, inter- really interesting <laughs> yeah and that's an interesting interesting insight into you because yeah. that was a character that that, that wasn't that oh, come on five <laughs> years ago i'd never done a show yes um, and then to jump that far. and then suddenly i was a man in a dress mm-hmm. um yeah i was playing this part of uh edward kiniston who was a real character who was an actor in the 17th century yeah but he always played the part of the women mm-hmm. in the plays most of the time um, very flamboyant very flamboyant mm-hmm. Very, you know, he was like extrovert. I'm very extrovert, but like I think he was quite an insecure person as well, because mm-hmm. it was then it was the time of when women did come on the stage, so he felt very threatened. Um, and but it, he was kind of like this very old school. I'm in charge. You're all you're all beneath me. I've never I've never I've never been that sort of person. I'm, I'd like to think I'm a fairly humble person who's not kind of like mm, yes, all you silly people doing theatre. Um, no, I love it. I'm not. I'm, but to get to play that character that's not really... I'd like to say nothing like me mm-hmm. um, was was really... That was like the most fun I've had on the stage. What did you get out of that? Oh, Christ. Oh, yeah, loads. Um, I got to explore how to act something very different to me. I, for me. I think I'm learning now, having done, what, like five or six shows, the less like me the character is, the more I can throw into it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that kind of like someone said it's like character. Oh, you're more like a character actor, um, yeah. Because I've played a few things where it's quite a lot of. It looks a lot like me. Mm-hmm. So when I was in Stepping Out, I was Jeffrey, who was this shy, awkward, bumbling, gangly, middle-aged guy. Hello. Um, <laughs> then we did. Uh, we've done. 
Vicar of Dibley, where I was mm-hmm. Hugo. So again, shy, gangling. Oh, I thought that was quite a character. Dumb. <laughs> yeah, he was a character, but he's a lot like me because someone went, "Oh, you, you could, found some similarities. You could be Hugo." Yes, yeah. Whenever I said to anybody, "I was in Vicar of Dibley," who do you think I was? Like, "Oh, you were Hugo." I was like, mm. "Yeah, yeah, I was." Yeah. Um, and then, um, and even when we did Narnia, I was Aslan, and I was like, "How on earth do you? How do you characterise the lion?" And mm-hmm. it was really, I love the way we did it, where you had like the kind of the people as the kind of the, you know, the extension of the, the, the puppet characters. Yes, yeah. Um, but I was like, how do you play Aslan? I was like, I've always thought of him as really old. Mm-hmm. And you were like, no, no, he's going to be quite young. And I'm kind of like, because that was me. I was mm-hmm. like, okay. But it was, that was a real challenge because it was like, A, there's, there's no person to sort of base it on. And I was going to be like a, a, a stern lion, but I'm mm-hmm. a, a gangly six foot two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that's not yeah so that was really hard to draw on something from mm-hmm. that um yeah but the going back to Kiniston it was it was just this wild lunatic it was brilliant I, I think my word description was a histrionic transvestite basically. okay yeah <laughs> it was just it was and everything was massive and yes, like yeah. loud and brash and there was there was very rarely a moment where he was being nice where there was you yeah within that maybe there's something in exploring the different personality yeah. types yeah yeah in that exploration through, yeah, who is this person that, that I'm going to become for yeah. a couple of hours of the evening mm. in front of everybody. But it was very hard to put mm. him down again afterwards. Hard to put him hard down. Hard to put him away. You yes. kind of, kind of you, you, you find yourself reacting to things, and, oh, <laughs> which, is, which was like a kind of a Kiniston thing. Oh, I became quite cutting in some of my remarks, like just joking to people. I found I, I developed this kind of, evil sense of humour this tweak yeah. yeah I was like oh it's, it's like it's, I want to put, I need to put him back in the box a little bit I don't want to mm. upset people um, yeah so every now and again I'll say something and I'll get someone going oh there's Kiniston again <laughs> it's funny I had that I had that with one part the part that I most enjoyed playing and it was 20 years ago right and I haven't found a part that I've enjoyed playing quite so much since it's been a bit of a a bugbear of mine to try and find something, but I played this madman, mm. Renfield in Dracula. Yeah, right. And and that was very much similar. Not not me at all. Like the extreme version of me, I'd like to think, yeah. <laughs> of playing a madman. Yeah, yeah. But I found so much exploration within that, and I was this different character mm. that I also found it hard to let go Yeah, for a while afterwards. I found it hard, but even in rehearsals, I remember I would carry on... <laughs> Kind of pulling <laughs> bits of pulling that. back to that character. Is that because it's fun? Because you enjoyed that so much. Mm. A little bit. You know, I want to. I want to use those bits again because they were nice. Yeah, because kind of little traits that you had. Yes, and so, or maybe something in your mind sort of yeah. flips. Yeah, yeah. You get <laughs> and stuck, you, and you get character. stuck, and you've got to try and you've got to try and refind find yourself. Maybe, yeah. and maybe there's fun in that. Yeah, a break yeah. being a, a break Having from a break. being Dan, from being Martin, yeah. and then we go and be these other yeah other people. And it was lucky, well, it was lucky that you got me for Narnia, because otherwise, I was, ironically, I was going to be a pantomime dame. That was another thing that someone was trying to nab me for at the same time. Right. And we went, can you, can you do the dame for our Christmas panto? I was like, no, I'm already doing a Christmas show, actually. So you said so. that you'd, so you, so let, let me, let me see, <laughs> let, understand your timeline. Been, you did this little bit at, at, at school. I did a tiny bit at you school. You had a little taster and you, you and did I, kind I, of enjoy it. I enjoyed it but, it, but then got bullied. Got yeah. bullied. So that, um, that. And then, so my, my thing really growing up was music. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents and I, went, I grew up in church, um, and my parents like loved singing, um, and I would go and sing with them. So by the age of like twelve, I'd sung in the Royal Albert Hall on the stage. Is this part of the choir? Part, uh, part of the choir, choir. Not, not as a soloist. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. <laughs> um, in a great big choir um, yeah. with all different churches that would come together um, in a kind of like a prom, like a, a prom concert, but a church version. Um, mm-hmm. So that would happen every year. So every year. I was going up to London for six six weeks in the like one evening a week, rehearsing all these songs in a massive choir mm-hmm. um, with um, a guy who um, he's just become a, a BEM guy called Noel Trudinick, who was a, a rector or a director of music at a big church in London just next to the BBC, um, and his church was had a full orchestra in it because he was a, a professor of music mm-hmm. at um, one of the London colleges. So he had this he had a symphony orchestra in his church of all people who would go to the church. So we used to once a year, go to the Albert Hall, you have this massive choir, and one year we even had choirs come over from America to come and join us. You'd have like 500 people in this huge choir. Well, if you've ever seen the Albert Hall, it's like the two massive areas up either side of the organ. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this huge orchestra, and it, they play classical music. There'd be um, like kind of church, like sacred music as well. Um, so I used to like, I'd be like, oh, it's the Albert Hall this year. 
So I'd, I, so I had a I had a DJ. I had a dinner suit right. from the age of like ten because that's what you had to wear for this <laughs> thing. Um, but it was magical. Like so, I go to the Albert Hall now, and I'm like, ah, oh, oh, you reminisce. I reminisce. I feel quite at home. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a bit it's not at home, but like it's not like. I'm not like, whoa, it's the Albert Hall. What like, kind oh. of effect did that have on you as a child, oh. having that kind of no, huge creative outlet, being part of a choir? I can't, thinking back now, I just have to realise just how lucky I was to get to go and do that mm-hmm. every year, um, to be immersed in like re- like top quality music. They were, pro- they were professional musicians that were in that orchestra. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the people who sang in the, in the choir were professional singers, um, who just happened to go to that church. Um, yeah, so it's, it gave me an amazing, without knowing, it gave me this amazing grounding in, in music mm-hmm. um, of all kinds. And that's kind of the, that was where, more where I was, I was doing a choir at school and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but never really, well, I was never really an upfront person, I was just in a choir. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until I did a karaoke like night on a kind of um, like a youth holiday thing, mm-hmm. um, where I was like, "Oh, I think I'll, I think I'll sing a song," um, and I sang "National Express" by Divine Comedy. I've actually got it on <laughs> CD. The guy recorded all the, all oh, the really? acts. It's on CD. <laughs> Maybe um, we'll tag that in this video <laughs> oh, and add it terrible. to. You. <laughs> it's really. I'd lost my voice. We played football the night before, and I'd screamed my night, screamed my head off mm-hmm. all night. So I went to the high note, and I just went, Ugh. <laughs> but they let me off, and I won. Um, and then I was like, "Right, I'm oh, singing. I'm quite. But that's just quite cool." Um, and then my parents. Um, Got me singing lessons at school when it used to be like subsidised through school. So I had singing lessons and then my confidence just like people were like, wow, you like, you used to be really quiet. Mm-hmm. And now you're like, you're not like annoying, but you're confident. Like, And then I was so like, So it helped with your, co- oh, not massive. your confidence with just within the performing, but it helped just with the everything. rest, with it the rest of your to. life. And I think it came down again to that vulnerability that you talked about. Mm-hmm. Like I was in a lesson with my, my singing teacher. Um, he's called Laura Sproit. Um, I'm still friends with, I'm fa- you know, friends through Facebook. Um, and I think you know, I've invited her to come and see some shows. I don't know if she's ever quite managed it because she's got her own family and things. Um, but yeah, I did singing lesson with her. So it's you with one person and you've got to develop a relationship with that of trust with that person mm-hmm. that they can say, oh no, that wasn't that wasn't quite right. Or actually, you know what, today your voice isn't really up to it. Let's take a break um, and we'll come back to it next week because you've got to be, a, you've got to be critical of that. Um, yeah, and that just, it just it just grew from there. And then I was like singing with the choir more, like getting to sing like solo stuff, um, which was like, that was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then I was like, right, music. Cool. Okay, good, good. You can do this. Yeah, well, I can do music. Yeah. Um, don't pl- I didn't play any instruments at that point. Um, and then went off to uni. Um, and then there wasn't really a choir. At the, I went to XD University. Um, there wasn't really a choir uh, I could find. Or I was really interested in being involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was like the performing arts stuff. I thought, well, it's music. Okay, that's cool. There was Footlights who were like the, do the West End style shows. I was like, oh, okay, that's quite, that's interesting. Uh, and then there was Gilbert and Sullivan, which I'd sort of heard of a little bit, mainly through the Muppets. Um, okay. Because they sing some Gil- Gilbert yes, and Sullivan yeah. songs on there. Um, and then I was like, so I auditioned for the two. Uh, and then um, I remember really clearly that the, there was a callback for footlights so i did a i did i did a singing audition um I thought, okay well, well we have callbacks on on this night um if we want you we'll send you an email I thought, okay cool um whereas gilbert and sullivan were like great you're in yes uh, let's go down the pub I thought, right, brilliant. <laughs> um and then um i auditioned for them and they're like great yeah so our first rehearsal is is on this night and i was like oh that's the same night as the callback for footlights what should i do and then i thought hmm, well i might get a callback for footlights but i might it might be dancing, which I really can't do. Um, and I'll be in the background, wherever else. And then, whereas the Gilbert and Sullivan stuff, it was like, right, well, we're all in, you're kind of all involved. And there are lead, there's like, you know, there's lead, there's main parts. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, um, yeah, we'll go for that. So I thought, ah, call cool, back, never mind. We'll, we'll forget that. So I did Gilbert and Sullivan. Mm. Um, and then. Tell me more about Gil- Gilbert and Sullivan. So um, they were in the uh, 19th century, late 19th century, um, mm-hmm. so late Victorian period, um, and they wrote these light operas, which I would almost say were like a precursor to pantomime. Um, it wasn't musical, so it wasn't kind of knees up, mother, you know, that kind of stuff, but it was, it was, it was light opera. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really serious, like your Verdi, Carmen-type heavy opera. It was all in English, um, and there was dialogue as well. So opera is always just spoken, but 
the Gilbert and Sullivan had um, spoken dialogue and then songs that were like a musical. So before we had musicals, you had Gilbert and Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, there was, so they've done things like Pirates of Penzance, which is quite one of the like, famous ones. Mm-hmm. Um, the Mikado, which was about Japan. And it was always quite, they would always take the mick out of like current society at the time um, and make comment on people who were in, in power, I suppose, to a point to a poke fun. It was, it was mm-hmm. early satire. There was um, current affairs almost in there as well. Um, and be yeah, make it, taking the mick out of whatever was big in fashion. In the, at the time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like, the two shows that I did, we did one called Patience, it's really they're really random stories. They're really like Shakespearean like silliness, mm-hmm. like swapped identities and all this sort of stuff. Babies that got swapped at birth. Um, one where all these women are in love with this poet, but the poet actually hates being a poet. Um, and then another poet comes along, and all the women fall in love with that poet instead. Um, but he's in love with the milkmaid <laughs> of all people. Um, and then I can't remember. And then there's all these soldiers who want the women to love them because they're soldiers. We're, we're really tough. And we mm-hmm. sing songs about how soldiers are the image of manliness, not these poncy artists. Mm. Um, and then I can't remember the end of the story. There was something about someone fell in love. There was happiness. How's a happy ending? Yes, um, yeah. And then Patience was all about the Navy. And that was, so that was my second year. Um, and I went back the second year having been in the chorus. And then auditioned for, I was like, well, I think I'll, I'll try for a main part. Why not? Um, and I got offered like uh, the captain of the ship. So mm-hmm. it was like one of the main parts. Um, and in, it, in, in that story, he's like got a daughter. He's trying to marry her off to this ancient old admiral to get a rise in his social class. It's taking the mick out of class. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's in love with one of his like um, deck hands, who's like this lowly person. But then by the end, it turns out, I should give, give the story away if anyone goes to watch it. It turns out the two of those men were swapped at birth. Okay. Um, so actually she can marry the captain because mm-hmm. the one who should be the captain is the deckhand. Um, yeah. And it was just, so that was, that was really, that was really exciting because I remember that I got to begin the second act. So the curtain would come up and it was just me on stage mm-hmm. with a spotlight. It was quite exciting. And Anno- annoyingly, the video got chewed up in my tape in my tape player because it was back when we had tape players. Mm. Um, but yeah, I got to open the second act to a theatre of five hundred people. So it's a theatre in in Exeter, um, about the size of the Playhouse in Harlow. It's about four or five hundred seats. Um, couldn't really see anyone. It's just this big spotlight on me. It's meant to be the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I sang to the moon about all my various troubles going on. But yeah, I was like, and, e- and even then, I didn't think back and go, "Wow, I've just sung in front of five hundred people." That was just, I'm just singing a nice song. So did you feel that was a hobby at the time? Yeah, and that, was, that was my outlet at That at was university. your outlet? Yeah. So then why did that stop? Why did that kind of come to an end? Because university ended? University ended, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, you got to focus on getting work done. On a career. I became a teacher. Yes. Um, and when you become a teacher, it's your job, but I think it's also it's also a hobby. Mm-hmm. It's, also, it's a lifestyle being a teacher. It's a li- yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it takes up a lot of time. Yeah. You? When you start teaching, like mm-hmm. any job, I think, but particularly, maybe particularly teaching, it's the only job I've done, so I don't know anything different, that you spend every waking hour working, planning, mm-hmm. thinking about what you're doing, and then let's put on a Christmas show. And then suddenly, you're doing all the working and the planning, but also you've added in the extra work of putting on a Christmas show. Um, you get some curveballs thrown into you. You get some curveballs thrown at you. So then you're mm-hmm. suddenly like, well, I haven't got any time to do anything else. No. Um, I didn't. <laughs> but then I did do... A, so Jess and I met. That's my wife. Um, and we were doing a pantomime um, a lo- in a local um, local church. They put on a pantomime every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I was Prince Charming because I was the only guy of the right age to be Prince Charming. <laughs> um, and then school said, oh, we're doing a show... Um, where we need a wicked witch, but it's a massive part. We don't think any of the kids can do it. Could you do it? It's like, oh, yeah. Okay. So there's something, keeps something you keeps back. pulling me into theatre. Yeah, yeah, something keeps pulling just, you it's back just, in. It's just, it's a laugh, isn't mm. it? It's really good fun. So I did those two so shows you said, back you to said back. at the beginning of this, you said you don't feel like you have a lot of confidence. No. But yet you're doing these things where confidence is definitely needed. Oh, yeah, but I, I was wondering about this. Like, sometimes with a play or any any show, I think it's because you've got, You've got a script and you've got a director who's got a clear idea of what they want to achieve. Mm-hmm. They're giving you the the parameters to work within. Um, I've done one session of improvisation and it was, oh, I hated it. It was about five minutes of, imp- not even that, of mm-hmm. improv with one other person. 
in the characters of when I was doing Vicar of Dibley, just to just to practice, just to work the characters a little bit. Yes. And I hated it. I was like, I need I need words. You I need, need a script. I need to I know what I'm going to do. I used to be the same until I found the right teacher. Right. Until yeah. I found the right person that could could give me the freedom. Yeah. To be myself within that within yeah. that and discover what the improvisation was yeah and until that point i was very similar i mm. need structure. these stru- i need a structure <laughs> i need to, i need to be guided mm. um but then someone showed me how improvisation was was play mm. and to be able to play as an adult you need to feel safe yeah you need to feel like you're in a safe environment mm. the people around yeah. you are going to to look help after you, you yeah. help you yeah um, and there's those moments when you're on the stage and something goes a little bit left, it goes a bit south out of what you're hoping for. Yes, because you someone drops a line, mm-hmm. and you have and I get improvisation is the skill that can get you back on the yes. And I, and I saw that when I came to see uh, that production of Nell Gwyn. Yeah, I saw there was um, an older yeah. actor in it. Yeah, um, that was clearly forgetting his lines. Yeah, but everyone else was looking after him. Yeah. And that was really nice to see that everyone else, that you had cast... Mem- so he was... Yeah, the older actor was part of the scene, mm. but he was clearly lost struggling and moment. struggling yeah. in that moment of, yeah, w- w- I know kind of what I'm saying, yeah. but it's not kind of coming out. Um, but there was, yeah, there was two or three others with him mm. that were giving him a l- little nudge to get him back on yeah. track. And then when he had another scene later on, they kind of just... It was almost like they were holding his hand mm. through it. Yeah. And taking care of him. But yeah. they wouldn't have been able to do that without... Without rehearsal. Without the rehearsal, without having freedom mm. and feeling like they could play in it, without having that trust within each other yeah. Yeah. as well. The, the three of, uh, uh, so there was three of them and they knew how to navigate, navigate that particular bit mm-hmm. um, and pick it up naturally. So it didn't look like, to the uninformed eye, because mm-hmm. obviously you're an informed person, yes. uh, to the untrained eye that... That nothing, they were yes, helping, nothing was going wrong. Yes, yeah, and yeah. that's important to mention as well that uh, I do watch a production. Yeah, and you're look a director, at, aren't I, you? I watch a production in a certain way. I find yeah. it very hard to sit back and watch a story. Yeah, I, I, ta- I analyze and take things apart. Yeah, all the time. Mm. Um, my brain just doesn't. Yeah, it, I mean, do I enjoy that? Mm. Um, and the more I'm doing that, the more I enjoy it. The more I'm taking it apart, so I can, I, and I can tell. Mm. But a normal audience member, average public, yeah, that because the cast were so capable of looking after mm. him and being able to play and have freedom and have trust between each other, it it, it got the sing and the play continued yeah. perfectly well. Yeah. Who would you say that was down to making that happen? Is it that oh, the director's job? There was the, the director, I guess, was probably aware that that might have been an issue. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, maybe there was a conversation that was had that said, if this happens, because that's quite a big that's quite a big scene for that actor. Mm-hmm. Can you be prepared? Maybe they'd had that conversation. Can you be prepared to help them out? Maybe, maybe those but those actors were really experienced. They probably yeah. thought, in rehearsal, this has been a bit tricky, so I'm going to think about how I'm going to be able to rescue them. We always call it Baywatch. It's a Baywatch moment where the person's <laughs> like, oh, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. <laughs> and then people just dive in and just pluck them out of the water or yes. just dr- drag them back to shore so that they can mm-hmm. get through the scene. They'd probably thought about it. See, and then I've seen amateur theatre where that doesn't happen. No. Where you'll get the actor go off to the oh. side of the stage, uh, line, line, yeah. and everyone, the audience knows. And yeah. I think that's the difference with what I've seen with community theatre mm. in this town, in Harlow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, There's a, it, there has been for a long time that good, strong yeah. sense of yeah. rescue and community mm. I mean, the, that like, pulls so like, the play through. That first, that panto that I did, it, the person that writes it, those they, they they get them in from someone who writes the pantos, like a local. I can't remember mm-hmm. they are a local person, but they write the prompt in as a part in the show. Mm-hmm. So usually, I think the dame would come out, make some joke. And go, oh, who are you? Go, I'm prompt. Oh no, you're not. You're you're late. Or well, you know that's because now they were the prompt for the show. So we actually had somebody who would sit there with the script yes, and yeah. shout a line out if needed, or we'd just make it up mm-hmm. um, and just have a bit of a laugh. But that was a really different one because I was in a. It was a that was a really safe environment because mm-hmm. all the people that came to watch really were all the people that knew everyone in the cast. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't normal a lot public. of paying punters, yes, like you yeah, know, yeah. it wasn't advertised. 
mm-hmm. really. It was like, oh, it's just the folks in the church are going to come and, and watch watch the other folks in the church. Mm-hmm. And we all have a bit of a giggle before Christmas. It's all a good laugh. And they did yes. like five shows. So it was like five. It can't have been just people from the church because it wasn't that big. But it was their friends and their family who would come along. So the audience were The supportive. audience were really friendly and supportive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So even when it was going wrong, they were they were like joining it. And it was panto, so that was almost part of it. Yes. Um, so I'd never experienced like pro- this, you know, Victoria Hall stuff is proper mm-hmm. theatre. Yes. Um, yeah. I'd never experienced that before. So at first I was like, oh, it's really scary. Uh, and getting direction from someone, I would I would do something. She'd go, next time, can you, can you do it like this? Oh, you're sorry. Don't say sorry. I'm sorry. Stop apologising. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, so that became a bit of a joke for me. In my card, it said, thank you for saying sorry so often. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you've got to get used to that process. I've, mm-hmm. Whenever I've done shows before, you knew the person that was in charge. I'd known them or I already had a relationship with them. But in those more recent ones, mm-hmm. I'd never, I don't really know the director other than as the director of a show. Mm-hmm. So you walk in the room and you're like, okay, you got to, like, you want to put on a good, put a good face on for them to show mm-hmm. that you're doing it. You want to do a pr- proper job. Um, so I kind of feel like there's two, two types of amateur dramatics, isn't yeah. there? And you, and you've been part, I've of, been both, part of both both yeah. of them. So having been part of both, what do you, how do you prefer things to be? Oh, they, both of them have got so much. To, they've got they're both brilliant in their own separate ways because that panto stuff is the way in to drama for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think people probably start off with a local, maybe they start off with a little local pantomime, local village hall, and then you learn you're learning about. Which way stage left, stage right? I still can't remember. I still have to really think about it and go, oh, which way is it again? Or ask somebody else. And mm-hmm. like, okay, no, it is that is over that way. Um, or they're learning about timing and blocking. And or, and I didn't know anything about blocking. And I didn't really, I remember we're going to do blocking. I was like, what does that mean? I was like, oh, that's where you, that's where we'll tell you where you're going to stand. Oh, okay, right. And, and that's, that's, I didn't have a clue what that was. Mm-hmm. People just used to say, oh, you come over there, you go over there. And I didn't know that was what was blocking. Um, and making sure that you, how you face, out, but not square on. Like mm-hmm. I, someone told me I used to come out and start delivering lines, and it was like I remember that line in that, that bit in Back to the Future. No, um, Team Wolf. Sorry, Team Wolf with Michael J. Fox. Have yes, you seen that yeah, film? of course I have. And yeah, one of my favourite childhood <laughs> films. And he's one of mine too. I won't talk about why. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he comes out and does that bit where he's the the, cap, the the Civil War captain. He goes, "Burn the fields and isn't that the else. isn't that the dad? I can't remember. I thought I'm sure. It's no, Michael no, J. it Fox. is Michael J. Fox. He comes yes. out and does that bit. And he just stands there and faces the audience and goes, blah, Yes, because he joins, jo- joins the drama yeah, group. Because yeah, he's doing the basketball, yeah, yeah. but he likes the girl. Yeah, he he likes the girl, so he joins the drama yes. club to be close to that girl that he's got the hots for. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's, no, I was already, I'd already met Jess, so I was already involved in drama. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but you think, if I'm looking back, he, that was rubbish. He was front on. Was like, mm. So, yeah, like, I, I came out and I was doing it like that. Yes, yeah. And apparently, I used to, this thing, I tread, I would tread grapes. So, I would, mm-hmm. whenever I'm delivering, I would basically, my feet would be like tap dancing. Mm-hmm. On the stage, like walking up and down, like treading on the spot. And so I said, "Stop, stop it's, treading grapes." It's, stop it's it. very difficult to be natural on stage, yeah. isn't it? It's a very difficult environment because you, all of a sudden you're you're aware of yourself yeah. <laughs> in a different way than you were aware before you got onto the yeah. stage. And it's like plant your feet. Mm-hmm. And now I think I think I do it quite naturally. You come out and I just stand still. You just mm-hmm. you. But it's a skill you've got to learn because it isn't like you say it's not natural. No. I imagine anyone who does public speaking. When I, I know when I speak in in front of a group of other teachers or if it's a group of students, I don't stand still. Mm-hmm. Um, someone who, when I was a trainee teacher, the tutor would say, I feel seasick watching you because you move around so much. Mm-hmm. So then I used to sit down. I used to sit on a stool. I, used to, I bought myself a stool that I would put down and I would sit on so I'd stay still. Mm. When I teach now, I still move. I'm very demonstrative in my hands. I move around a lot. Um, so acting is very counterintuitive mm. in that sense. I have to learn to stand still, plant my feet, yes. say, feel the ground so you can like mm-hmm. get a sense of what you're trying to achieve. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's it, you have to, It's a skill you have to learn. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, even even I think back to my early days of doing theatre, I would, I would, ha- I had had this like bouncy thing. Yeah. I would bounce. I would sort of go on my tiptoes. Yeah. And I'd be like, well, I don't do that anywhere mm. else. Apart from in that, it? apart from in that place of being on the stage with the script and yeah. trying to rehearse, I mean, and be like, the, put your heels down. <laughs> one of the um, one of the younger cast in Railway Children, I think it was her first, maybe one of her first like production to be outside of school, mm-hmm. um, and she would stand still. But then when a line came, 
one of her feet would be like up on its toe and twisting left and right and she kind of like ooh, and like rock almost mm-hmm. and and the director had a quiet word I think you need to say just make sure you plant your feet you're standing really still and then I remember being maybe right right up before we opened mm-hmm. and I, she was delivering I looked down and she was stand, stand still and I thought wow like it, take, it took me ages to learn mm-hmm. how to stand still and you're 12 and you've you've nailed it in like three months yes you've yeah. taken that on board so that's and that's that learning process yeah and even with doing the, this podcast i found uh there's something in that as well of that yeah. of that being fairly I, i've done a lot of research into yeah. other people doing these podcasts and it shows and they're really good thank you <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate really that but um uh, one of the things that i've noticed looking at some other podcasts is a lot of the guests and hosts are very it's almost like they want the attention to be on them mm. and they won't stop moving or being animated and there's a lot of guests that go <laughs> and their heads are like there's this guy that that he he does get some good guests on um and he does have a subject that I'm interested in is it a guy that does a podcast about acting right but he's very annoying to watch because it, <laughs> and it's like just relax dude that's what I want to say to him just just have a conversation with the people and your mm. your your thing that you're doing would be so much better. But I've taken that and gone, yeah. right, okay, just just be. Like like with acting, being on the stage, just be present mm. in that moment. And you don't need all the nodding and the waving of hands and because it's not natural. It doesn't feel right, no. does it? Unless you're told to do it that way. Unless you're told to do yeah. it that way, because that's what you're be more flamboyant. Mm. And then that and that's the thing I've been told is give as much as you feel you can possibly give, because it's easier to rein it in. If a director says, "Oh, that's a bit too much," can you not? Yes. Can you not do that? Can you can you give it a bit less of that? Mm-hmm. That's easier than saying, "Can you give me? Can you do a bit more than that?" Because that makes them think, "Can you can you push? Can you push a bit harder? Can you push the boundaries?" And that was the comment you said to me after you watched me. You said, "Oh, I think you could be a really good Aslan because you were a fantastic man in a dress because <laughs> <laughs> you could clearly give loads." I was like, "Oh." It's a big jump from man in dress to mm-hmm. man in army uniform being a powerful lion. Um, yeah, I w- but that was, and that was a, there was a... Like, what I could show. see in you was a character actor. Yeah. Was a was a guy that could, yeah, take something that wasn't, because I didn't wasn't. know you. No, of course, actually. no, not at all. Uh, I didn't know you when I saw Nell Gwynn. I'd seen you on the stage mm. and I'd seen you in the bar, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know, I knew, so I knew there yeah, was, all a, the time. I knew you wasn't quite as flamboyant yeah. as I'd seen you on stage. So I could see that there was someone that could, that could take a character mm. that could start to think about the way that you walk, the way that you stand, the way that you move yeah. and do something, mm. do something with that. Um, and I think we did quite a, we did quite I a fun, thought, did a fun I mean, job on that. I didn't loved we? it. And it, but mm. that, it, and it's interesting how every show like has a different f- flavor, if you like, mm-hmm. like a different thing. Watching some back that we've like, if we get them filmed, mm-hmm. um, so I get to watch. And I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm looking after the like the vault of Harlow Theatre Company um, recordings, which is quite cool. So I get to watch right. ones I never got to see because mm-hmm. I didn't come and see a show here until 2017. Um, I didn't even know Victoria Hall existed, which is really sad because it's brilliant. Yes, um, yeah. And Harlow Theatre Company's been around for 50 years, and there's been loads of stuff going on in this theatre for ages and ages and ages. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until someone that my wife works with, who's involved in in the company. Um, said, oh, we're doing um, Blackadder Goes Forth. Um, and it's 2017, so it was part of like, aniv- like 100th anniversary celebrations. Um, Why don't you come and see it? I'm like, yeah, all right. And I, was, and I thought I was going to go in and see, you know, the am- am- amateur theatre. Yeah. And I walked in here and it was a World War I trench, which looked amazing. Mm-hmm. There was you know, really authentic, it looked really authentic. And then there was a little bit off to the other side that was like another room. And I was, and immediately... I was like, yeah, this is a, like, it's got a smell. The theatre's got that kind of, it's got less like a smell in here that you walk in and mm-hmm. go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for something exciting happening mm-hmm. whenever I come in here now for a rehearsal. Um, but yeah, it just hooked me in straight away. And it was funny, it then took two years for us to then come and do a show because it was just plucking up the confidence yes. to get involved. But yeah, it's not this. And what what is that like for the outsider looking in that has a, because there are going to be those people out there right yeah. now that are just looking in and thinking, oh, I'd like to get involved. Oh, gosh. Like, there's, uh, we've talked about this recently. There's so many different opportunities in Harlow, mm-hmm. just, as, just, it, just itself, because I know this goes out wider than Harlow, but there's always loads of opportunities to get involved in theatre mm-hmm. wherever you are. It's just, it's just how you find it. And I guess maybe that's something that, that will 
companies could do more or like lo- I mean, even the local like local councils could mm-hmm. do more to raise awareness of those groups that are not out there to make money mm-hmm. um they're, they're well, it, for provide... instance, Harlow, Harlow Council recently yeah. did. Harlow yeah, Council exactly. recently yeah, did a, the, they did a Gems of yeah. Harlow Award where they openly celebrated the the community, community groups, all the venues. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's brilliant because that yeah. raises awareness. And I think uh, we we've had more interest as a result of some of those Facebook posts. That people are going, oh, um, I'd love to get involved with your shows, and mm-hmm. I've done this and that, and oh, great, we, and we work because you want to add you want to add more people because that gives you variety in the Definitely. the people you've got available. Um, but yeah, it's just taking it's take the plunge. Mm-hmm. It is that it is that first. Is it what's that phrase? The hard the first step is the, is the journey the of a thousand hard. miles starts with the first step. Is mm-hmm. that something like that? Yeah, it's one of it's that you just got to step in the room, um, mm-hmm. and give it a, you know give it a try. Yeah, it's never too late. I was thirty five. No, thirty five. So you, that that's an age where you do start to feel like things are too late. Yeah, don't, don't you? Yeah. You realise once you go past that, it's not. <laughs> absolutely um but at the time you start to think oh no like yeah no i'm set up in my career mm. potentially and i've got family, family potentially and there's all these different things that people have got in their lives going mm. on by 35 and and then you're like how do, how do i add something new yeah in? at the minute and that's been my problem mm. i've had too many hobbies um and you just have to find it might be it might be there's a season in your life when mm-hmm. you do lots of something yes. but the great thing about theater is that you might not do every single show you might not do every show on stage because there's loads of things that happen backstage somewhere like here we're all volunteer led so mm-hmm. there'll be a show where I might be doing the doors mm-hmm. taking the tickets off people I might be in the little our little sweetie stand up our humbug mm-hmm. um, and that can be a really nice thing to stay part like of the community involved. yeah Stay part of a friendship group, but not, you know, like a, a show, maybe you commit three months to that mm. as an actor, as yeah. a performer or as a director. But there are so many aspects that you could be part of that yeah. only last for a week. Yeah. A week, three or four times a year. Mm. But yet you've got a huge friendship group yeah. to pull on. Like when we, my dad um, has come and seen our shows mm-hmm. and he's, he's, in his eight, he's in his early 80s now. Um, uh, and he helped with some of the painting and the building of the set because he's, he's into, he's, he's very good at, DIY mm-hmm. um, so he was helping us to fix things put things together um, and he used to be a surveyor so he knows he can knows sort of say doing. that should fit there that won't fit this mm-hmm. will work um, so now I'm thinking right we're going to I'm going to get dad more involved in some set construction because nice. he's an absolute gem mm-hmm. um, whether we could convince him to be on stage there's a show that the company have got lined up for July that would call for someone of his age mm-hmm. but he's never been on a play before so I'm kind of working on it but he has a big hobby because of his music he's really what benefit would that. you say that that would have for him oh, i don't know like meet, meeting new people mm-hmm. um that he's he's people he wouldn't otherwise have have got to know yeah um and just being involved in in something different but mm-hmm. yeah i guess maybe it's like they say don't get involved don't push him to get involved in it for the sake of it just because he's the right age yes yeah. um because i know the guy who's directing that show played the part and he he must be 30 years younger than that part is because that's acting mm-hmm. isn't it you just play up to it yeah but yeah you, you might meet new people people mm-hmm. you'd never had that is it i've met all kinds of people through this yourself um yeah and, and beyond that as well just that you wouldn't never have otherwise yeah got to know and and having people is important yeah in your life isn't it yeah, yeah. outside of oh, the, gosh, just yeah. doing the job and doing the, the th- and even just outside of the family mm. you know that's that's important isn't yeah. it to and to have different people you get to know outlets mm-hmm. um someone you might discover that's got a really handy talent that that they can help you with in you know in everyday life on something you might be able to offer them yeah help with as well mm-hmm. um yeah and you know it's not just on stage it could be back you could be involved in backstage stuff sound or light or stage management which is like just sort of keeping everything organized and running during the show mm-hmm. um yeah there's there's low so many different things that you could be involved in when it gets to that gets to that point of getting involved in something. Yes, Loads of yeah. stuff. So you touched on a bit there about the the future. Yeah. And things that you know are coming up within yeah. the local theatre community. What are you kind of feeling at the moment and thinking? 
So I am involved in our next one, but mm-hmm. backstage. So I'm doing the sound uh, design and operation for our next show, which is called This May Hurt A Bit, which is all about um, the NHS. Mm-hmm. Really interesting play. Um, there's like 30 characters played by 10 different people. Okay. Um, so lots of, there's lots of, you know, but it's not it's not a kind of, um, I've been told it's, it's it's quite brecked. I don't know what that means, but he's, he's quite, it's quite surreal in some senses. Mm-hmm. The set's not like really f- super finished. Um, so you have to use your imagination a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Lots of people changing characters, changing costumes to be different people. So you've got to use your imagination. Um, and it's, but it's, it's a really, I've not seen a piece of theatre like it here before where it's going to be one that it, it isn't just there to entertain you and make you laugh. It are, there are lighter moments in it, but it's quite, it's, it's quite serious. Quite thought provoking. quite thought provoking. That's the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's going it's to it's be food for thought, mm-hmm. um, especially with, you know, everything in the out, outside world that goes on around the NHS at the moment. And um, your role within that, sorry, is so going to I'm going to do sound design. Yes, um, which you did also I for did my for, show. For Narnia. Yeah. yeah, which at the beginning, when you came to join Narnia, you were just going <laughs> to be an actor. I just and, got, and then I pitched in. And then, you, and then, I, yeah. and then I said, I was, I'm struggling with this yeah. part of the show and told you some of the ideas. And you're just like, oh, I can... Come up with some ideas. I can come up with some ideas. Yeah let's, yeah, let's see what we can find out. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's like, I'd done... Maybe you, when, and when you said you'd help out, I don't think you <laughs> we're going back to Narnia. I don't think you quite realised how how big, big well, uh, I challenge I was you'd, setting you. You'd got because you'd obviously um, adapted the script mm-hmm. and put in where it said and it, and it kept saying underscored, a mysterious music underscored, exciting underscored battle music. I was like, so Martin, what what is this? Battle music. What, what can you see it looking like? You're like, well, it's gonna, it's gonna be quite, it's gonna be quite a drum beat. So I was like, oh, okay, and then. I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm a music. I, I play guitar, but I can't read music, mm-hmm. and I obviously can't compose anything. And it was it was a couple. It was only a couple of months before the show, so we weren't going to write an entire score. No, no. But then it became clear in that that you wanted pretty much the whole show to Scored. have music, mm. and that was what made that show <laughs> different. Like I'm blowing my own trumpet. That was what mm. made that show really magical. Was it wasn't it. Again, every single thing I've seen in the, in the theatre in Vicky Hall has mm-hmm. been really unique because being involved in the process of it from right from the from the beginning. Well, although even there, I wasn't involved from the beginning because you were building all those puppets for months and months and months yes, before yeah. it, before I got involved. Um, but the the way the lights was, I don't know how many lights were up on the rig. There were so many lights up there, mm-hmm. um, which were used in really creative ways. We had all that smoke. We had footlights that were like the LEDs mm-hmm. that made it glow in different colours. And then we had this really lovely like soundscape to draw people in. And I remember the buzz I got from that people was people coming out and just being like, "Oh, that show was so beautiful! Oh, it, look, it looked and sounded amazing! It was really, it was, it was like it really held our attention." Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, and I think there was something you you did a little clip a, a few months ago of like you get that moment when things click and you feel really pleased. You know, like, it's like scoring a goal, yes, almost like yes. Well, you bit, you know, yeah. It was like you, there were loads of those little moments. There was a lot of those like, moments. Oh, yes, that just that just was just. Perfect. I remember we found a track for it was the it was the time that the children go through the wardrobe yeah. and go to Narnia oh, and for was, the first time. That was an accident. That, it was, well. wasn't it? It that, was an accident because I was. It was um, from a well-known uh, Star Wars series. TV I shouldn't show. say it too loud. I don't <laughs> know if we want to say it too loud. Um, and I was watching something on telly. Uh, with my daughter and um, when we were listening to this it was a, an animation with that piece of music playing mm-hmm. um and uh we were like oh this, this is a pretty cool piece of music and it fit and it fitted with your idea you wanted to do kind of kind of a bit of a synthy there was kind of like a synthy, synthy feel sound Eight, to it. yeah 80s, 80s i had this I, I had this, i grew up in in the eight, with yeah. 80s films things like um like lion witch and the wardrobe yeah. being on tv yeah. but also things like um the never ending story yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to kind of give it that 80s vibe, yeah. feel like the never ending story, which was very kind of synthy, yeah. the, the music feel. And it just, and we were like, oh. That's and, but that's cool. kind of come back into fashion yeah, a little it bit. Yeah, it is hasn't that kind it? of like low, is it lo fi? Mm. Like, I don't yes. know what that's what music is. Yeah, it's, that's really, it's really, I've, there's tons of it on YouTube if you mm. can just sit and listen to it for hours. And it's really relaxing. Mm. Um, and it was that thing of, oh, well, this bit of music, this could fit. So I remember we said, right, let's just let's run the scene and we'll just play the music. Mm. And we both sat there just going, ooh, this is really like, exciting. it's working. It, it, it went, it was, to, it was amazing it was how it fitted the beat of the cho- It was the children going through the wardrobe. Yeah. They passed along like this corridor type yeah. thing. And then they came out they came into out. This, this world. Yeah. And there was an exploratory moment. And yeah. then down some steps. 
shapes yeah um and then looking around a bit more and then discovering a creature, creature. within narnia and, you were just, and we were just and just, we just each beat of all the different moments that happened the music hit it perfect. yeah it was just like it it was fell like, into your into our laps yeah you're we just like yes and it yeah and it was like this is meant to be yeah it wasn't yeah like you say it wasn't wrote for the piece no um, and you found it by accident from watching something on yeah, TV. On TV, and we we pulled it pulled it together. Yeah. And then it was that bit of like how we ran with those sorts of music because that's that you. I guess like any, it was like composing mm. a piece of music, but we weren't composing it. We were what was the word I talked about? Curating. That's someone said. Yes. I curated a yeah. soundtrack. And there is a there is a little bit of artistic freedom that you get within amateur theatre that you wouldn't pr- particularly get yeah. in professional theatre. Mm. If that was to be a professional production, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do no. the the things that it would have, that we or it would did. have cost you a lot of money. It would have cost a lot of money that person for the mm. rights to use that music. Um, Whereas with this, we had a little bit of artistic yeah. freedom that we could sample bits sample of bits. sample bits of music yeah. that we could then pull together, pull together. to to yeah. add to this show. Um, and yeah, it was it was it was pretty good. Mm. I thought it worked pretty flipping well. Yeah, um, yeah, and people. It didn't ever feel out of place. I guess no. that's the thing with sound. It has to... It has to work. Has and to you work. know when it works yeah. and when it doesn't. You just know. And I think... I was, I was kind of thinking about this. Like, when you when you come into theatre, mm-hmm. you know it's not real. Um, and you look around and you see all these lights. And you think, okay, there's going to be loads of lights. And they're going to do things on the stage. And provided they don't do anything really outrageous, it's not going to like draw your attention away from what's happening on the stage. Yes, yeah. They're there to compliment the actors. And sound and music, it all it has to come together in a really nice, it has to work all together perfectly. Mm-hmm. But I guess if sound happens wrong, it's it's really easy for that to break people's concentration, either the actors or the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's when it when it goes wrong. When it goes wrong, that's when you notice. When you notice it. Yeah. If it's going right, you shouldn't notice the sounds yeah. and lights at all. You should be immersed into it. You should a, be immersive, yeah. Into a, into um, a world. Yeah. And like, it's like, Thomas says, if with like, if you're a, a pianist accompanying a singer, mm-hmm. no one's there to listen to the piano. They're there to listen to the singer. You're, you're meant to be unnoticed. Um, and you, yeah, you don't want to accidentally hit the button that makes mm. a weird noise come out um, or play a noise that doesn't quite fit. And everyone goes, oh, that's not, that doesn't fit in with, with this. Mm. So when we spent hours. Like we did. I, I think we even spent a whole night whole, here. A whole day no, and half of a night here. And half kind of, of a night like here. Going, yeah, oh, is that the right bit? Yeah, yeah, no, no. We've used that bit already. Let's not use it here. Yeah. Mm. It was, that was a great process. It was exhausting, mm. but it was worth it in the end because it gave us a, gave everybody, not just us, it yeah. gave everybody a really good show. And mm-hmm. to the point where people were, I was like, and I'd, I'd be sitting backstage going, oh, did you, did you hear that? Did you hear that bit of music? And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't notice it. I was like, okay, maybe that's actually a good thing that you didn't notice it happen because yes, it yeah. fitted in. But I was sitting there going, ooh, ooh, because I wasn't running the sound. So that was it's a really when It's when thing. you get the hair standing up on yeah. the back of your arm. Well, it and sounds a little bit like self-satisfying to say. No, oh, but... It really made me get excited when my music did that. But, 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 we, but why not? Well, yeah. <laughs> and, yes, yeah. Yeah, and we, we are do it. We, We're not doing it for anything else other than our... The love of it. Yeah, yeah. We're not doing it for financial gain. No. Respect when you're doing community theatre. You're doing it for yourself and mm. the people the people that are involved in the show and the audience that are in, in the room. And there was a guy sat... Yeah. I remember there was that guy we ended up having a long conversation with. He was a, a punter mm-hmm. who sat in the bar for ages after the show had finished. I think... And then I was like, is he a parent of one of the kids who's here to pick up mm-hmm. someone? So I just... Sort of shyly said, "Hello, yes. yes, I'm not Dan. Are you one of the parents? Oh no, no, my wife's had to take my family home. She's coming back to get me in the car, but we live in like live half an hour away. Mm-hmm. Um, she'll be back soon." And then he went, "So, um, how much are you all making from from this then?" I was like, "How do you mean? Went, what? What do you all get paid?" I was like, "Nothing." He went, what? How many shows? I was like, Seven, 17 shows." Mm. You're doing seventeen shows, and you aren't getting any money. No, are you all mad? No, we just love theatre. He was like, yeah, you must love it. He said, it's really good. Mm. But I can't believe you'd do it without getting paid. I was like, no, we just we just love being here in this theatre, putting on putting on shows. Tell me a bit more about that love. Oh, I don't, like, it's funny because, like you said, I'm a late bloomer to this. I've mm. come to it late. Um, I don't know. It's that thing of being with people who've all got a common goal, maybe. That's a really, I'm not someone that likes, I won't, I don't just go down the pub. 
and mm-hmm. hang, spend to hang out and just chat because mm-hmm. I'm terrible at small talk. Um, I like to talk about something like this. You know, we're talking about a yeah. specific topic and you know, mm-hmm. chewing over it. Um, I can't just amble something. I'll go for a walk with a friend, but we're walking because mm-hmm. um, I mean, our goal is to go on a walk. If we have a conversation, yes. then brilliant. Um, but being here, I'm, it feels very safe because I'm with people who I, I might not know them, but I know they're here for the same reason, which is to be involved in a production of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to have common ground because we're in the same hobby. So we're going to have that shared interest to kind of spark about, oh, what shows have you done? Oh, yeah, I saw that. That was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what shows do you think we could do? And you'll always next? have a story always from have a show. Stories from, yeah. yeah, there's always going to be loads mm-hmm. of little anecdotes. I remember when I was backstage yeah. and this happened. or, or a co- And even a common friend. Yeah. Like every, within the community theatre, once you start to get in there, there are connections, aren't yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing the, the, the connections of people that there actually mm. are. Sometimes. It's a really safe mm. space um, because everybody. And it's surprising because it can also there. look clicky from the outside, yeah. can't it? Oh yeah. From the outside, it can look like how do I how do I get in? Like and and yeah, of course. Whatever you're doing, there's always one or two individuals mm. that aren't great. Yeah. Um, so you you get that's, and that's life and that's life that you get that with everything. But I would say, from my experience, ni- at least ninety yeah. percent are genuine good people. Yeah. Yeah, my my friend's expression is every, everybody has a bum hole. So um, if if everybody is, if if that peop, group of people together are a body, there will be one butthole in there somewhere. Mm. Um, that's just an unfortunate fact of life that there might be someone who's a bit a bit difficult. Um, but you le- but that's maybe it helps you learn some of those social skills of how to manage difficult people, mm-hmm. how to just you know tread around them carefully. Um, so that's a bit. That's a little bit on the. That was a bit on the nose. That comment. Um, <laughs> Maybe um, that'll be the title <laughs> of this episode. Everyone's got a butthole. <laughs> um, Dan Ricketts. Dan Ricketts. Everyone's got a butthole. Yeah. Mm, that's, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, yeah. It's like I don't know. It's you, you just. It, it's such a. It's it's really good fun. You know, mm-hmm. And I would just urge anybody who's got an interest. And thought, oh, I'd love to do a show. Wouldn't that be fun? Who's come and seen a show here or anywhere? How do I get involved? Just message a few of those companies and i can guarantee you that every one of them will say oh come along come and see what you can do so we had we did vicar dibley this year um and we uh so we auditioned for that in like february and the the harlow theater company has its like annual meeting um in the little little local place and there was a couple there um and this this chap a guy called john um and he'd never done theater before he's in his i want to say he's in his 50s don't go i hope that's not wrong um never done theatre but saw an advert I think or it came up on Facebook he said oh that could be maybe I'll give that a go he came along and he auditioned and um we got him in the part of the vicar at the beginning of Vicar of Dibley they use the old vicar that dies so that they have to bring in the new vicar Mm -hmm. um he came out and he worked he worked his socks off to get his lines at the beginning and he said he was really nervous of course yeah he was everyone's nervous the first show Mm -hmm. um but it was brilliant he, he took all the direction about how to die on stage. <laughs> his, his job was to come out, say a prayer and die and, that was it, and yeah. collapse on stage, mm-hmm. which is, it was, and he said by the end of the week, his knees and his elbows were aching because he was having to fall, he's six foot tall, mm-hmm. having to fall from upright onto the stage and then get dragged off by his ankles with his hand, arms above his head looking dead um, at the beginning of the play. And now he's in the next one. Yeah. He's in, in, he's in this new one about the NHS. He's got a part in that as well. And he's got, a, I know there's quite a big chunky monologue right at the end mm-hmm. that he's got to deliver. Um, not to give too much away. Um, but yeah, he's, and he's, so he's dived into it because I think hopefully we were welcoming mm-hmm. to him, um, made him feel at, at ease to get involved. Yeah, and just just wanting to come and give it a try. Nice. Yeah, he was, so he's, he's 50. I was 35. Maybe maybe my dad will get involved. I don't know. Um but yeah, it's but never, there is never, definitely not an age limit on no, this. And, 100% no, 100%. No, and sometimes I think about, and I have had breaks, in fact. But sometimes I think this is something that will always be part yeah. of my life. And it's whatever I there. go, whatever I go off and do, yeah. whether I whether I continue doing the podcast and do this in diff- different ways, and I have a journey with with doing mm. this and come away from community theatre, or I've had periods of my time where I've done um, low budget films yeah. and tried to pursue acting professionally, and I, I'll always go off and do them other things. But then the community theatre is always mm. something I'd like to come back to. And I don't ever see that being not there. Yeah. 
I don't oh. I don't want it to not ever be I mean, there. And I think in Harlow it's it, when I I don't know the Harlow theatre scene like I'm not been around for ages, which might not be a bad thing because mm-hmm. you don't you get they don't have any of those like bumps in the road. Um, but there's like there's there's lots of little companies that are, are kind of springing up yes, out yeah. of it. So whether you're a young person um, who wants to get involved in like community stuff, so there's Livewire locally mm-hmm. who are a charity um, that you can be if you're under eighteen. I think it is um, there's. There's there's hats up at the playhouse who like doing musicals. There's Harlow Theatre Company, and they've kind of got more of a kind of play, kind of um, orientation to what they do. But I've done musicals in the past as well. Not to say they won't. Yes, um, yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to do another musical because I've, I've 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 sung all my life, mm-hmm. but I've never actually so you don't done have a to musical. Be, with this, you don't have to stay part of one group. No, You're not tied no, to no, I don't. to to one one group of people. No. You can move. You can take what you've learned and move, move somewhere over, else. Move over to to other and groups. And you might bring and something. And, you might bring something new mm-hmm. to that group. So you might be a young person that comes into an older group and then, oh, great, we've got younger people. We can yes, yeah. think about what shows we can put on. Because I guess there is that fear for a, a small little community theatre group that says, well, what if we buy the rights to a show mm-hmm. and we put on audition out and nobody turns up? Yes. What do we do? I know there's, I know there's other routes where you can advertise it through like websites and things, aren't mm-hmm. there, that you can put things out. But it must be a massive... That must. I've never. I've never had that experience. Yes, yeah. I've not been doing it long enough. Where you say it's, well, it's interesting. You've just gone on. And nobody turns up. Well, you've just gone on to two up. subjects of something yeah. that I'm pursuing myself at the moment. One is that I think you were there the other yeah. day when yeah, yeah. when we were sitting around a table at the pub and we kind of came up as a group that there needs to be a way for the community groups within a town yeah. to connect yeah. and to network. Um, because a lot of them don't know what the mm. other ones are doing, and some of them even don't know the others exist. exist. You, I remember you, um, you talked about one, the Mercy Mercy Theatre. Mercy Theatre Collective. Theater Collective. I, I do know them because mm-hmm. they come and work at my school. Yes, some of the guys and they have come in, have come into my school and done a series of workshops with Wonderful. the students. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were, I think, they're the one. They were born a bit out of Livewire. That's some right. Guys, yeah, it yeah. is the right ones. Okay, yeah. right. Um, mm. And th- then they've got a connection with other groups because they've got people who've been in that group. And then there's you know there's other youth youth theatre groups and it's where those young people maybe go they, they may well go off to university because mm-hmm. that's that's what they're going to do hope they can go and do like drama stuff there you know seriously yes, or as yeah. a hobby but if not that they can get involved with things locally here as well yes yeah um, um, yeah and keep so the, and, there and, the, and there's people within those groups that do other roles, not just acting, mm. st- production managers, lighting designers, sound designers, that that sometimes one group is struggling with mm. find, having those resources and another group is okay with it, that maybe we can be sharing. Yeah. And I, I personally only see it as, as a positive mm. if we kind of find a way to connect and come together. I did have someone yesterday say to me, oh, no, that, that, that would be a bad thing. Because then they'd take away the lighting. I'm not saying it's Harlow Theatre Company. Yeah. Another group said to me, yeah, but, uh, oh, you know, we like our lighting designer. Doesn't mean you're going to lose them. Uh, yeah. No, it means you've got the opportunity to, to share and well, have more. Well, and also you might go, oh, I like the rig they've got there. Could we mm-hmm. do a show here? Do a show, do a show at Vicky Hall? I think um, with any creative thing that you do, it's better to collaborate yeah. than to be singular mm. and separated. Well, that's... Like, uh, uh, where am I going with this? It's like create, create is only, is only about making. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, in, in creation in creating things. You rarely, you very rarely destroy something. That sounds a little bit bit wishy washy. Um, <laughs> but you don't. You, know, you say, oh, we're going, we're going, we're going to lose our lighting person. Well, you you could either say, can you you can do this one show with them and then make sure you come back. You know, you, but that's about agreement, having like a, a bit of a verbal agreement with that person. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, if they really enjoy working with that group, what's what's to stop them from doing a bit of both? Yeah, um, working with both, or or even training new people up because I can inspire I can work a, inspiring I can work a sound desk, mm. but I don't know. I haven't got a clue about how to work a lighting desk. I've broken lighting desks where mm-hmm. I've pushed buttons and they've like <laughs> crashed. Um, I've been told leave it alone, leave it alone. I'd love to learn how to operate a lighting desk. Yeah, um, I've done a kind of stage management in a in a secondary school show mm-hmm. it was quite complex we did sister act and that was it was like hundreds of cues um with a couple of students either side of me running the two desks mm. and they start the you know if we got to it well what what do i push it went they went from being okay i, I push this fader up or down or i press mm-hmm. the mute button 
to the, by the end of the run, he was sat there and he was saying, "Oh, um, they don't sound quite right." He was playing with the with the, the frequency. He was changing the EQ mm-hmm. mid show because he'd learnt how to. I just, like, this is how you, this does this, this does this. Mm-hmm. And, oh, that doesn't sound right. I was like, at first, I was like, "Ooh, it's a bit scary." He's a fifteen year old kid who's never done this before, but he bl- blossomed in confidence. Yeah. And the other kid, he said, oh, "I do lighting every year." And he, and he knew it. And he was, without even looking at the cue, I was about to say, get ready. And he was already poised to like change. Because I don't know how to plot a lighting board. He had to do everything mm-hmm. live every night. Because I didn't know how to do the plot and press the button to do the next cue bit. Um, I, I understand the fear. Yeah. I, but at the same time, I don't think any growth or anything good can come from, from being alone. I think everything good comes from sharing mm. and comes from 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 community yeah comes from us all working together and you've got to think about five years or ten years time who's going to be there to do that if you've only got your pool of actors Mm -hmm. a really small group like say in isolation and they're the only ones you really consider for what shows you might do and then who you might cast Mm -hmm. how do you get out of that box yes um Cause, oh yes, oh yeah, and no, I saw you. Because I mean, and, and I've never had to cast a show. You have. Mm-hmm. If you get too much in your head about who you want, it must make it really difficult. If someone comes in and, and they're really and they're really good, but they're a bit different, maybe to what you originally thought, mm-hmm. that must be quite. Diff- some, is, is it difficult to break out of that box? Almost. I'm um, actually. So this was another. I'm having this uh, this a little bit of this issue at the moment. Um, I'm. I'm about to direct a, to pl- a play yeah. Um, and I'm holding auditions this week and the original person that I wanted as the lead isn't available at oh. the time that I want to put on the play. I think I'm quite adaptable as a person, but I do know a lot of directors that will go game over mm. if I can't have it how I want it at that point because you kind of get a vision when you start to, to look at directing a play. Most all directors will get a a vision and idea Mm. and yeah as you'll get um within community theater especially you'll start to go that person could do that and then when they say no then it's like oh like how do i how do i change the vision now um however i've learned to be quite adaptable i've um i don't know how i've learned to be adept but maybe it's part of my nature yeah uh to be adaptable um but i'm holding open auditions now and seeing who comes, yeah. and seeing what 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 turns up, and and going from there. Mm. If if the right people don't turn up, then then maybe I won't continue with the show. Um, but you never know if you don't open it up. Yeah. If you if you keep it quiet and if you don't talk to the world <laughs> about it, and we live in a day and age where you do have the opportunity to mm. talk out loud. The internet's a megaphone. Yeah, isn't it? Especially so you, if you use it well. Yes, yeah. The internet can be if you yeah <laughs> if you want to if you want to share something you can you can do that and anyone can see it and, and anyone yeah. Think about like my my Instagram is a private one just because of, because of my job mm-hmm. and I don't want and I you think don't it makes it harder for one for the students to find it because mm-hmm. you know because I mean I think I did that cycle thing last year and I put some videos on yes, not yeah. really understanding how Instagram works that mm-hmm. they they become a reel mm-hmm. and then everyone can see it. Yes. It's like, oh, what if one of the kids, what if some <laughs> kid from school stumbled across that? That might they might think that's a bit just a bit embarrassing. They probably think that's really embarrassing. Actually, yes, it might yeah, be yeah. too bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I keep my profile private just just for that reason. Mm-hmm. But that get that limits what I can do. But that's that's why people have different Instagram yes, profiles, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not as media savvy as as you are with mm-hmm. what you do. Um, again, but that's the, another creative side of stuff that people can get involved in with a with a group yes um, Harlow Theatre Company I've put an ad and that's like an advert I, I've been looking for someone who can take their marketing sort of on to another like another level if you like because yes. we're still kind of quite Facebook orientated mm-hmm. um, and a bit of Instagram but it's how someone might go oh I know how to do I know how to do it with this this bit of software that this bit platform to, in, to engage a wider audience yeah because um, the, the internet is definitely cha- you know we've been around since the birth of the internet and we we've seen you know we saw MySpace yeah and then Facebook and we've seen it grow and change and yeah. we're in another phase of it all changing now mm. and where for a long time Facebook was the place everyone was at it's now a place where the parents are at. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is oh, the us. old ones, the old, the old ones, and the kids. Old. Well, as if you think back to being a teenager, why would you want to hang out in the same place your mum and dad are? Exactly, and that's what the internet's become mm. for for younger people a place yeah. to hang out. I've said that to parents in the mm. past. In my job as a teacher doing mm-hmm. e-safety, I said you have to treat the internet as a real, tangible place. Mm-hmm. Like think of it as a street with lots of shops on, and every website is a shop that's yes. trying to draw you in. And also, there are shady characters hanging out on street corners who are trying to draw the mit- catch, draw them, catch yeah. you out and nick your nick your wallet. Mm-hmm. Um, don't think of it as this separate. Oh, it doesn't. It's it's not really real. It doesn't affect us. It does, and we we see the effects on young people yes, all definitely. the time mm-hmm. who are growing up in this very fast, very fast, fast changing, changing and developing. Um, yeah, and it isn't like when 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 we were young, uh, the <laughs> internet was fr- was built to serve us like you yes. was a website and you would get information from that website and but now like facebook and everything else it's the other way around they harvest mm. all no. their information um well for get, instance to tick, get stuff from you tiktok is tiktok's job is to keep you on tiktok yeah and it does a very good job of that and i spent a little while i i, I was addicted to it mm. i got drawn in tiktok understands what you're watching yeah. for how long you're watching and it will keep it even knows where your eyes are looking on the mm. screen so what you are drawn to yeah. on the screen so then so then it can give you more of what you, more want, of what you want and it can give you the dopamine feed mm. and their share price goes up yeah because everyone's on that yeah. platform so the advertisers want to be on there and as well they sell your data to and then and then they sell your people. data and everything else that you're doing on your phone yeah um but there is an opportunity for us to reach an audience mm. using these platforms yeah. we can we can use that data as well to say oh we're putting on a play mm. that would be of interest to a certain type of people uh, for instance when i do children's plays um i use facebook and ver- facebook and instagram in a very particular yeah. way to draw in a certain demographic yeah um i know the last when we did lime witch in the mm. wardrobe I will make sure that that target audience is young children. Yeah. Well, they're not going to part with money mm. for tickets. Their parents are, though. Their parents are. So you can use that data to target mm. parents within a five-mile radius, in particular mums. I remember you talked about this before. Yeah. It's, that's quite scary, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You can say, I want to target every mum five miles from my theatre with a kid under 10. Yeah. And Facebook knows that because of the pictures they upload. Mm-hmm. Or they said, happy sixth birthday, Josh, whatever it is. Suddenly, it knows everybody that you're going to want to send an advert to. Yeah, which is brilliant, but uh, also terrifying. You mm. think, okay, well, how much of my information have, is Facebook holding? So, as a user, we sh- we just need to be aware of that. Yeah. Do we want that? Mm. Do we want to? Do we want to be targeted that much? But then, as a as an advertiser of a show, or an advertiser of a community trying to build the community, we want people to know that we're mm. that we're here in the real world. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that we can actually put on shows with more people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because the other like we said before, you, you just get stuck in a. You can get stuck in a box of we do these kind of shows because these are the kind of people that we can put in the cast, and these are the kind of people that will come and see it. Mm. And then you end up. That's not create. Is that creative? I don't no. know. But what is, yeah, you want to branch out a little bit and th- come up with ideas of things you can get from all over the place I guess the then you have the danger of becoming like a club don't you yeah uh, yeah and a it's private and a clique yeah a private and club, a club and a yeah, yeah. A, and that's what you want to come away from you want to have a community mm. I was thinking it, it, um, we use it as a bit of a joke um, that line in um, Shakespeare in Love when um, ben Affleck bursts into the theatre and says, "What is the play and what is my part?" And got, it's just like, "Oh yes, hello, yeah, yes, here's your part, yes, yeah," because that person's expecting I'm going to I'm going to be in this play, yes, yeah. and I always play the the romantic male lead, or I always now I'm a little older now I always mm-hmm. play the middle aged, difficult character. You know, they they just like, no, come on, let's just try some different. I would ten years ago I would never have thought of myself as flouncing about in a massive dress, mm-hmm. not a chance. Um, because I thought that's like like uh, um, that character in um, Monty Python. No, that's silly. Stop that. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, but now that's like that was a riot. Yeah, you just you just it's never too late to try something new. Just get out there and give it a crack, and, and urge the theatre companies to welcome people in. Mm. What would you say recently? There's been a little bit in the news about um, local councils 
cutting funding to the arts, in particular uh, Suff- Suffolk Didn't County see that. Council. Right. This week, hundred percent cut of all arts funding. Well, what not- would you say that takes away from from there? Low. Oh gosh. Like, where do you start? Mm. Um, well, like community theatres like this that might rely on grants to keep them ticking over when when there's not shows going on, they're finished. And then you don't have any venues for those play, for those small community groups to put it on because they can't afford to do a huge, massive theatre mm-hmm. that's 500 seats. They're not going to fill it. And then that theatre can't fill itself. I mean, it, it, there's only one way that's going to go, and that's that, art, that arts are going to crumble in that area so so what's the importance of the arts to the to the wider community oh, not man. just the people that aren't getting but involved isn't that a thing somewhere that says when the arts die like i, I don't know I've, I've heard it somewhere well i'm always rem- i always remember this winston churchill quote of um during the second world war yeah. he was asked in parliament well, why are you still putting money into the arts it's, and yeah. and he turned around and said well what the hell are we fighting yeah, for? Yeah, like, yeah. what is the point of this life mm. without the the arts? Yeah, like that's the beauty of what it, within our existence yeah. is. It not otherwise we're just like we're, otherwise are we just drones that we're just back to work the and, again when we yeah. just fight to stay alive? Yeah, and that's all we do. But, um, for what purpose? For the, for the daily grind. That's mm. just de- oh god, that's just depressing, isn't it? So think. isn't that where where we're yeah. potentially going back to? in a in a slow painful way by saying we don't value yeah the there's arts only, there's only there's only one end to that if you if you take if you pull the plug on the arts we look at like um during covid when all the theaters had to stop mm-hmm. um and i remember sitting and watching at home um as the, the show must go on where they kind of it was a big collaboration lots of west end artists yes yeah and it, benefit each, each week the they would artists. put on yeah. one Production. Put on a production, or the, and then there was like a big concert, um, and it was a benefit for all those uh, all those creatives who were out mm. of work, mm. um, who might have been getting a tiny little bit of furlough money. My brother works in the creative industry; he's a lighting mm-hmm. designer. Right. Um, so uh, his next big thing that's coming out until he's Gladiators. So okay. um, he was involved in the crew for mm-hmm. Gladiators on BBC, um, and he goes on tour with various like art, with musicians and or shows and events. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So for those like eighteen months. It was crippling for him because mm. he's a sole earner in his house as well. Um, so, like, he took a he thankfully because he's been self-employed for ages, he could get like one of those one of those COVID loan things. Um, but yeah, like if that stopped, yeah, or you can just retrain as a cyber engineer, can't you? That was yes, fine. that's what they yeah. said. Yeah, become a cyber analyst yeah. if you're a ballerina. <laughs> um, cre- creativity is like what we're all about. Everything we do is creative like my other when i do the other hobby of cycling mm-hmm. um i'll use an app to like plan routes and then share them with people mm. that's creativity in another way so i'm saying hey i've i've worked out a nice interesting way to ride from point a to point b that isn't just along a road i found a i found an interesting path but that's could you imagine if a point in your point in uh, the whole of the world went through this pandemic yeah where everyone was struggling in a different yeah. way can you imagine how much harder that would have been if there hadn't have been television programs, if there hadn't have been books, if there hadn't have been music? Because we all do have struggles in our life. Yeah. At that particular moment, we've all in recent history gone through a, a global yeah. struggle. Um, but yeah, even put yourself, even take it down to the individual. You have a personal struggle. You have someone close to you pass mm. away. How do you get through that without without music? I honestly, well, that's, How a, do you, that's a really hard hypothetical, isn't it? Like, mm. music is is my, one of my like things. I'll, li- I'll listen to music in the car mm-hmm. uh, on the way to and from work to kind of help me relax or you know whatever. Um, so if we imagine, don't, I don't, so if council say we don't need to fund anymore, yeah. So if a council or the government say we don't need this area of Humanity doesn't need funding. It doesn't need growth. It if you doesn't can't need fund it yourself. We're not. Then that's it. Yeah, it doesn't need looking after. Then we either have to do it all for free, mm-hmm. <laughs> which which we <laughs> do yeah. anyway. But then, for yeah. instance, with this theatre, pretty much everything that goes on yeah. here, everyone's doing for free. For free, yeah, and giving up their time for free. But it still costs to put the gas on, yeah, and the electrics on, and 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 that alone in a in a small venue 
can cost well, yeah. tens of thousands a year. And it's an old building. This building's mm. 130 years old or something getting on for yes, something like yeah. that. Um, it, it wouldn't happen. No. It's a, this would be a... Well, this building nearly did get sold for whatever, and it would have probably been turned into a... Into a car flats, park or a block park, of flats. Or a, no, some <laughs> stylish big house with mm-hmm. a nice faulted roof. You know? Yes, yeah. Um, Churches, what happens to churches? A lot of churches have been sold off and turned into apartments or houses mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, yeah, without without the backing of a government, it, it is it is not going to be. You can't have a theatre like this. It will be in a garden in a park, mm-hmm. in a you know, and, and then provided you get the permissions to do it, which might mm-hmm. rely on a council. Um, and that's nothing wrong with that. I've seen, I saw a lovely play at uni, Midsummer Night's Dream, in the mm-hmm. gardens of the university. It was great, but but it does need you can't it do does that need without the backing of the people in authority. And mm-hmm. so if they're not interested in it, then we're we're up the Indian River without a paddle, well, aren't we? We're stuffed. Yeah, and we I, we can't, I kind of hope that these these governing bodies like councils are there to look out for our best interest, yeah. and you know. Yes, we need our potholes filling in, and, and we <laughs> to need get the, to the theatre and put shows. Uh, yeah, on. and we need and them and the, all them other jobs that they, they, they have to do. But yeah, don't lose the value in the art. Humans are we're creative by nature, aren't we? That's how we like we get we do the next step in whatever you know industrial change or invention. Invention mm-hmm. is creative. It's just a different kind of creativity where you come up with a crazy idea of how to stick something together that's creative that's not mm. that's not just creativity isn't just li- limited to the arts you're if you're someone who says oh i've got a, i've got a clever way of getting across that river mm-hmm. that's creativity because you're coming up with something and i think without well you go right back to little kids they they play they role play that's the first thing you do you learn about how to fulfill certain roles mummies and daddies that was always you know well, I'm going to play mummies and daddies I'm going to play vets <laughs> I'm going to play teacher and that was and that, that my, my niece often says what are you going to do te- I'm going to do schools and then she sits right you sit there and I'm going to teach you your times tables and I was like yeah good mm-hmm. um, that's what we, we, we that's how we learn mm-hmm. and that's how that's how we've done it for tens of thousands of years and I guess the the we have we have these schools, yeah. to school systems to try and keep to help that in young children. But then, what do adults have if they don't have entertainment and arts? Yeah, if they don't have music, books, theatre, television, if that isn't being given the foundations and the funding from the government, then then where's it going to go? Yeah. Without the foundations, it's going to cr- it's going to crumble at it's the higher crumble. levels. It, yeah, well, because like we've talked about. The future of community theatre is the people who are teenagers now mm-hmm. engaging with groups or activities or coming to see a show here and go, oh, that's great fun, and getting involved in theatre and then growing up with it through their life or coming to it later. But that, mm-hmm. oh, my link was because my wife had been involved in it as a young person. That's why I'm involved in theatre now. She kind of ho- hooked me into it. Um, but without the foundation at the beginning how do you then reach those upper echelons of entertainment? All those people always talk about a teacher or um, a drama club that they went to um, or a show they went to see that inspired them to get involved with it or they heard someone read a, you know, a sonnet or something like this and went, oh, that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like Years ago, um, I was really, really lucky, really privileged um, to see David Tennant in Hamlet um, at RSC. Um, random little, little uh, anecdote uh, a friend organised a trip to go and see it we had a Dave of culture because we saw Shakespeare one day and went to Orton Towers the next um, but I got to see David Tennant and Patrick Stewart mm-hmm. in in Hamlet it's like I was one of only a few thousand people that got to see that because it was only I don't know how many shows they how many um, they did in the run mm-hmm. there weren't a lot of people and I was sat like two rows from the front we've got these amazing tickets and I was like, oh, this is how you do Shakespeare. Because before then, I'd just seen it in school. I didn't really know mm-hmm. what. It was always a bit, oh, a bit ploddy. Yeah. Suddenly I was like, oh, this is like, this is real. Shakespeare is definitely something that's, I have all, it was, I don't know how it's taught these days, but when I was at school, it was taught wrong. It was, it was read. It was taught as a thing. It's there taught are, as a thing is, that you it's read. It's really nice. I, my daughter's just started secondary school and they've been doing Midsummer Night's Dream. And she's come home from school buzzing. Oh, I've been playing, um, uh, I forget which character. She's, I've been. I think she was playing one of the the, the couples. 
mm-hmm. one of the one of the, the females in that. I got to play this character, and we go, oh, you got to play, yeah, yeah. And like our teacher gets us up, but but that's because she's done drama here, so she knows she's not just someone who just teaches a book, mm-hmm. especially when it's a drama like that. She yeah. gets them up, gets them performing it. Um, it was never so the Shakespeare never it. wrote Shakespeare never wrote to, be to be read. read. No, <laughs> no. So no. so reading it now is doing a disservice yes yeah. it's, it's confusing the issue and and yeah i remember being at school like what the hell is this like being dyslexic as well but then outside of school i was part of the playhouse yeah. young people's theater and uh, the romeo the opportunity romeo and juliet yeah. came up and i thought oh I bloody hate shakespeare i'm not getting involved <laughs> in that yeah but the guy that run run the young people's theater is like please come and come and audition just just give it a go just read mm. And I was like, oh, no, please, no. I ended up being Romeo. And and I loved Which Shakespeare. And I love Shakespeare ever yes. since. Like, it's it's followed me throughout my whole mm. acting career, Shakespeare. And I've, I've always used Shakespeare as a foundation of my acting. Um, and, yeah, prior to that, I would have, from how I was taught it at school, I would never have expected yeah. that. It's... Well, what's the word to say? Shakespeare is incredibly powerful, mm-hmm. but like it's got to be handled carefully. And at the minute, all too often, schools will opt for, oh, well, let's show them Baz Luhrmann. And yes. then all the kids, I had the yeah. kids who were writing about guns. I was like, mm. no, there's no, there's no guns in, Sha- in Shakespeare. <laughs> but there were guns in the movie. I was like, but it's a movie. Understanding it's an the interpretation. They were having, they had swords. Because mm-hmm. remember on the gun, it said rapier, which is a sword. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, oh. So then they all talked about how, oh, so Tybalt wanted to shoot at Romeo because he'd been at the party. I was like, no, okay, let's just go back again. Let's just go again. Mm-hmm. He wanted to attack him with a sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's that's how it that's that's how it was. Oh, but why do they have guns? And like, oh, okay. It was like a bit a bit yes. went in circles a little bit. Um yeah, it's it's those sort of things are brilliant because it engages people, that creativity engage mm-hmm. people in in Romeo and Juliet. So that's that's one of my ways of engaging with Shakespeare. I remember mm-hmm. it. Um with that caveat that there's no helicopters and cars and guns in <laughs> in 14th century Verona. Um, yeah, but like you said, it's just without all those different ways of doing creativity, mm-hmm. we're we're lost, really. You know, what is the point? Like you said, we just it would just be nine to five, get up, mundane. go to work, mundane. Yeah, Ooh, it's just they're thinking about it. it's horrible. It makes me think of the Matrix when they're just plugged in and Essent- they might as well just be asleep. Essentially, just, just, yeah, just a battery. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. And that's the that's so that's. Did I mention the play that I'm putting no. together? It's I mean, ni- 1984. Oh wow! Ooh. Yes, so 1984 wow, right. is essentially yeah. what what does the world look like? Stripped of everything. Stripped stripped of music. Stripped of books and yeah. television and where we all just I've, conform I've conform to the party. That's essentially what, conf- do what you're yeah, told. Do what you're told. Mm. Ooh. I'll admit, I've never read it. I started reading it. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard the read. The first five pages, like, oof. <laughs> yes, it's a hard read. Yeah. But the the film, the um, the Richard Burton. Yeah. Gosh, what's he, it's gone out of my head now. What was the, the actor? Richard. The Richard Burton was one of the main guys. Right. But then the guy that played the main character, I've lost it now. So if Jess was here, she'd know because she yeah. knows everybody in every film. He's ever. Doc, Doctor Who. He was the War Doctor. Oh, John Hurt. John Hurt. There you go. John oh, there Hurt. You go. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic performance mm. from John Hurt and Richard Burton in that 1984. So I would have say can't read the book. The book is a hard read. Yeah. Watch the film. Mm. The film is a, yeah two fantastic performances from both of them. Um, I think it's Richard Burton's last performance right. as well, um, and he gives a really solid quiet menacing performance in that film so have you uh, uh, talking about shows <laughs> there's the one in London at the minute which is Mark Gattis uh, yes, which is all yeah. about he when he was being Gil Good directing Richard Burton in Hamlet I think was right, it is okay. that right which sounds fascinating because mm-hmm. it's like a character study about a ca- people act- putting on a play in a, mm-hmm. it's a play within a play mm-hmm. and I always find that that sounds like it's really an interesting idea mm-hmm. um, yeah like I mean I'd not been to go and see plays in the West End until the last few years. I'd seen a few musicals, um, but going to see a play was like, oh, that's a bit, but, that's a bit highbrow. But then but having anyway, the interest of having being it in here, yeah, yeah, again, it's opened up, it's opened, opened up, opened up something, opened up your world, yeah, and that makes life all the new little bits that you throw in mm-hmm. can just make life more interesting. Mm. 
Otherwise, it can be a bit boring. So to, to end this conversation on, if you could just summarise the value that this has given you oh, coming back to theatre. Like, it's just made my life more interesting. As that's, as that is the one thing I can say about it. It has made my life more interesting because I've learnt new things. I've met loads of really interesting and really fun people. Um, and I've learnt loads of new skills. Mm-hmm. And, and there's so much opportunity to learn even more. That will never stop because every show teaches you something different. That's wonderful. You, Thank man. you, Dan. Thank you, Martin. Appreciate you joining me on oh, the it's podcast. Been been, it's been a pleasure. It's been great to watch these and it's hopefully this will be the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's always hard to watch it, watch it and yeah. listen to yourself back. Yeah. Um, I find it terribly hard to, to watch back and edit these um, and put mm. them up online. I, I hate watching myself back. Um but I'm doing it. I am watching back. I find it as a learning yeah. thing to watch myself back. Um, but yeah, I can imagine as a as a guest um, and someone that and again and I do really appreciate mm. your support in listening and watching and um, yeah, telling me that you, the things that you enjoy or mm. you haven't actually said anything you don't enjoy from it or anything that can be I different. I'm trying at this to think point. of anything at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like to hear that as well. I like. Yeah. I want to grow. I want this to grow. Yeah, no, I keep it up because it is so. really, it's really good fun, and it, and that's the thing of I, you start off with these. Mm-hmm. I think it's like theatre. You start off with the ones that are familiar to you. So I've listened to podcasts of people that I go, oh, I know you, because it's like oh, and that's like you come and see a show because you mm-hmm. know someone in it, um, and you go, oh, that's really cool to learn that little new thing about them, and then because it, it's autoplay, have this one because yes, yeah. I've been out in the garden working away on, on my man my man cave my shed um, and then it's like I get a new person so I've listened to the one um, just I started listening to one with um, Vince Joe Ness about his crea- the creative stuff he makes yes, so yes yeah, so it's just like it leads you like oh this is really interesting to hear someone else someone else's little someone else's else creativity take. brilliant thanks then well, cheers <laughs> should we clap to end one, <laughs> one two three the BTS Creative Academy podcast, Uncut. I appreciate you joining us for this conversation. If you'd like to find out more about the BTS Creative Academy, just search BTS Creative Academy. And so that you don't miss out on any future conversations, don't forget to like and subscribe.